into order. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as the revised agenda is presented. I'll second. It's been first and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, first item up is interview of board member candidates. And first up we have Christine Boast. Please, uh, right at this table here, please. Good. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> We're just reading these ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just want to make sure. Strike any of them. Yeah. I just need to be consistent. Okay. Um. So the first question is, tell us about yourself and why would you like to be a member of the Prosser School Board? Well, I've been living in Prosser since 1991. My kids went here. I'm a retired police dispatcher. Um, before that, I worked at Whole Singers for a while. Um, and I have grandkids that go here now. So when the opening came up and I heard about it, I thought, well, now that I'm retired, <laughs> give me a little more time. Okay. Um, what do you believe is the most important for the, what do you believe is most important for the Prosser School District? Mm. Wow. Definitely education. That's not an easy question, <laughs> but no, it's not. yeah, no, most definitely education. Um, and being able to help the kids with their education, with anything that they might be having problems with academically, and then maybe get them, you know, involved in some other activities. Okay. Um, as a board member, what would you do if a community member or parent complained to you? I would listen to what they had to say and help direct them to where they need to go to voice their, either file a complaint or voice their concern, whether it be a superintendent, principal, um, board. Thank you. Uh, what is your current stance on the safety and security policy? Oh, boy. With the way things have been going in the schools, that's just, it's, it's scary. It's scary. I don't know if there's a, uh, anybody from the police department that patrols around here. Or do you have a school security? Right now, each school has their own security staff. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And teaching the kids what they would need to do if anyone were to come in. Okay. Thank you. In your opinion, what types of schools should Prosser have? Hmm. Well, of course, we have the elementary and the middle school. 
and with the high school, just classes that teach the kids what we need to learn to be out in the world. Um, I think I'm going to strike number six. Are you guys okay with that? Yes. Okay. okay um, currently, Patterson still has processed money from the last bond to build the high school. What are your thoughts about this? Oh, I didn't know about that one. Um, I thought Patterson had their own school district. They do, and it's I'm not 100% sure how to describe how that works, but. Yeah. Well, if they owe and they can pay, they probably should. It would help. It would help us out. It would help Prosser. What are your beliefs in what are your beliefs in being part of a team and how would you work with the other board members and the superintendent to come about positive resolutions? Um listen to what anybody can say. Um being able to voice my opinion without being criticized or insulted. At times, the role of a leader calls us to make unpopular decisions. What are your thoughts and beliefs about making decisions that are not always received well by the public and not for public disclosure? And the second part of this, that question is, will this be difficult for you? I'm going to say yes and no. It probably would be a bit difficult. It wouldn't be difficult to keep it quiet. I mean, that's right. never been a problem. Um, to be able to work with, you know, everybody else that I'm usually pretty good at working with people. But, you know, we all have different personalities, so. Uh, it works and it doesn't work. <laughs> I'm going to strike number 10. If you guys don't mind. Okay. Uh, school boards operate best when they're honest, open-minded, solution-oriented, and committed to the children of committed to the children and the community. If you're appointed, do you believe that you can maintain these traits? Yes. In the work that we do, it is often the case that others, whether it's board members or community members, may not share the same opinion that you hold. How would you work through a disagreement with an individual? Um. Listen to what they said. May have to try and keep my mouth shut. Um, but if I could, you know, if I could get them to listen to me and talk to them reasonably. As a leader, there are many perspective, perspectives or filters that you will use to think about potential decisions. What is best for the students, risk and liability, legality, and traditions versus innovation? How would you work through a complex decision and the pros and cons in order to come to the best resolution? Do all the research I could.
Visualize no, but I think I would actually like to strike 13. Okay. I crossed it out and then I skipped over it. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to share with the board? Gosh, not that I can think of. Okay. Do you have any questions for us? That I don't. Okay. No. Okay. Any other questions? Christine? No. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Christine. I appreciate hey. it. Thank you all. Uh, Anthony Dorsett. Yep. How are you doing this evening? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. All right. So tell us about yourself and why you'd like to be a member of the Prosser School Board. My name is Anthony Dorsett. I currently work for Yakima Chief Ranches, an integrated crop management company in Zilla. I work as their intellectual property attorney. I'm interested in being a board member to make an impact to positively impact students' education. Thank you. Uh, what do you believe is most important for the Prosser School District? Provide meaningful education to students in a quality learning environment. As a board member, what would you do if a community member or parent complained to you? I would listen to them. I would write down notes on what they said. I would get their contact information so that you could get back to them. And then I would turn it over to the superintendent or an appropriate administrative position. And then I'd allow them to deal with the issue and to do the follow-up. Okay. What is your current stance on the safety and security policy? I don't know the safety and security policy, so I couldn't speak to that. But as you mentioned, and as I read, that there's a security officer in each school. And I think as safe as we can make our schools, the better. In your opinion, what types of schools should Prosser have? The best. So currently Patterson still owes Prosser money from the last bond to build the high school. What are your thoughts about this? They owe money as in they need to pay. There's outstanding money that was supposed to be paid in. Is it tax money? What is the... Uh... Kind of the background of this is it funds that were appropriated and were never given um, i'm not sure how to they're a non-high school district and so when prosser invested in the facility since they send students in who are part of their district into this district they owe us for a portion of the building so we're in the middle of reconciling that okay i think you should pursue reconciliation then since the students do go here and part of the facility and the fees and the tax money that goes into this facility is also being taken from the Patterson School District. So it would be appropriate, I think, to have them pay the fair share for the number of students they have going here. Okay. Uh, what are your beliefs in being part of a team and how would you work with the other board members and the superintendent to come about positive resolutions? I think being part of a team allows you to have different lenses to look at an issue with. So. You might think about something and you think one way and then you don't even think about alternative facts or things that could be happening that could impact that decision. So by having a team, you're able to take in five different people's views, six different people's views to be able to come to like a resolution on one topic. And I think the more people you can discuss something with, the better resolution you'll come to. And it's not quite negotiation, but it's kind of a negotiation if you have differing views. and I think you'd come to a better resolution, even if what you think should happen happens, you'd have to justify it. And maybe you'd come to a better outcome than you did initially. Okay. At times, the role of a leader calls us to make unpopular decisions. What are your thoughts and beliefs about making decisions that are not always received well by the public and not for public dis disclosure? And will this be difficult for you? No, I don't believe it would be difficult for me. Um, 
Can you repeat the first part of the question? I'm sorry. At times, the role of a leader calls us to make unpopular decisions. What are your thoughts and beliefs about making decisions that are not always received well by the public and not for public disclosure? I think you have a moral and legal and ethical obligation to come to the best resolution you can, and those should be your guiding principles. And if it's unpopular, that's fine, but you should be doing your best to be legal, moral, and ethical. School boards operate best when they are honest, open-minded, solution-oriented, and committed to the children and the community. If you're appointed, do you believe that you can maintain these traits? Yes, I do. In the work that we do, it is often the case that others, board members or community members, may not share the same opinion that you hold. How would you work through a disagreement with an individual? I would discuss it with them. I would tell them why I made a decision or why I'm leaning towards the decision and explain the reasons why I did it or why I want to do it. And hopefully they can understand, even if they disagree, that you're following what you think is best and the best decision. Okay. As a leader, there are many perspectives, filters that perspectives or filters that you will use to think about a potential decision. What is best for the students, risk and liability, legality, and tradition versus innovation? How would you work through a complex decision of the and the pros and cons in order to come to the best resolution? I would probably prioritize the criteria for the situation. If it's something that is high risk, you'd obviously weight risk more. If it's something that is weighing tradition versus innovation, you would weigh it differently based on the situation. So you'd prioritize those, weight them, and then make a decision based on those criteria. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the board? No, I'd be excited to serve if I was given the opportunity. Do you have any questions for us? Yes. How long have you been on the board, each of you, and what impact do you feel has been made in your time that you've been on the board? So, Regine? I filled an opening that was left when someone had to leave, and I've been on the board about a year and a half. I've enjoyed the experience because I care about education and kids, and I'd like to think we've made some good decisions since I've been on. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, I'm Peggy Douglas. I've been on the board nine years, and um, I feel like I've made some real positive impact on the board. And uh, I don't intend to run again. I feel like it's I've completed all of the. Um, the uh, personal goals and promises that I've made to the community and to myself. And uh, it's time for somebody else to step forward and um, bring new ideas to the to the position. But I've really enjoyed my time. And I believe that um, um, I'm proud of the service that I've provided. But it's time for somebody else to step forward. Thank you. <clears throat> Can I go last? Well, yes. Okay, well, okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I was elected against the incumbent in 2020, November 2021. I believe what I have achieved is to facilitate discussions and not rubber stamping things. I believe um, we've successfully cut some programs like out of state consultants um, and other items that the community wanted, that the teachers wanted. And I Think that we have facilitated um, discussion, awareness, and education uh, with our staff, our students, and the community as to the current state of the foster system. Thank you. All right, last but not least, um, I basically was elected in November. Has it been that, that long? 20 years? It feels like that. Wow. Um, so it's roughly been a year and change, year and a half, year and three quarters. Um, and I, I think you know, the, the work's not done and we still got a lot of work to do, but I think fiscal accountability has been my number one focus. Mm -hmm. Strategic planning has been my number two and then facilities planning, you know, making sure that we take care of what we have to steward the, the dollars and the facilities that are basically owned by this community. So that that's been my goal since I started and we're, we're slowly getting there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would you guys like me to stay or? 
Yes. Thank you. Um, we're way ahead of schedule. Is Monica Burnett here? No. I don't know. She's scheduled for seven years. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, we and I imagine, yeah, let's just take a short recess from this. Uh, we'll move back to our regular agenda, if that's okay. Um, so we're going to skip down the informational items. Does that work? Uh, first item up would be the teacher clarity play teacher clarity playbook presentation. Please going to put that PowerPoint up. Um, and my principals who must have been out in the overflow room are all rolling in right now. They're coming. Here they are. Yeah. So, Yeah, right. Yeah, I that's right. Oh. So uh, the five principals and I went to the Teacher Clarity Playbook um, Conference in San Diego at the end of February. Um, and what what is Teacher Clarity and why is it important? Go ahead, Blake. So the conference, um, I just said that, so keep going. Yeah. Kevin, or maybe fast, Kevin. Oh, go back one. Sorry. Uh, so we've been talking about the effect, effect sizes um, for different strategies and um, things in education. And Teacher Clarity has seventy five hundred, so it's almost. Uh, remember, four tenths is one year's growth, and we want four tenths or above as an effect size. So we always have two years growth when we have teacher clarity. Teacher clarity is broken down into four categories, the organization, the explanation, giving examples, non-examples, guided practice, um, and then the assessments for student learning. Okay. Uh, teachers must clearly define the learning intentions for the day and outline the success criteria students must meet. So in, in that, um, teachers have to be clear about what students are learning, why they're learning it, and what success looks like. And at the same time, students should be answering, what am I learning? Why am I learning it? And how will I know when I've learned it? And it's, it's a combination of those things that, uh, between the teacher and the student to really have effective teaching. Uh, teacher clarity is a key element of effective teaching. So the quote that's up here, we articulate daily learning intention success criteria so our students' learning is visible. Um, that visibility is key because you want the students to see for themselves that they've learned, but also for teachers to be able to see that they've learned. And that's in a variety of different ways. Douglas Fisher, it's his quote. He's one of the chief authors of the Teacher Clarity Playbook. Go ahead, Blake. Crystal was at a conference and they um, had a saying that um, going to a training or conferences without implementation and follow through is just lunch with friends. So this is our plan for this next year for um, launching the work and then the, the work that we'll do throughout the year. So um, we will all, all K-12 schools will implement this, um, the teacher clarity uh, playbook, the, the information that we have will be across the entire district. Um, we're working on um, a PD plan uh, to implement um, for this fall and throughout this next school year. We've been working on that and we'll continue to work on until the end of the year. We will use two days in August before school starts to um, begin the training um, and roll it out and um, get everybody on the same page using the same terminology and the same understandings and information. And then the fidelity part four is um, we will have expectations across the district for this to be implemented at all buildings, all levels, all departments. Um, and then we will we'll get through the first um, two days, we'll go through uh, modules one and two, but there'll be a plan for um, the rest of the year to go through modules three through nine. So we'll complete the entire um, the entire training throughout the course of the year. 
Um, so our school improvement plans, uh, just like Michael was saying, it will be nice to have that common expectations for um, all teachers K through 12. And so we'll make sure that we incorporate that into our um, school improvement plans around one of our goals. Uh, we're gonna use classroom data through a walkthrough document that we'll create and we'll be doing walkthroughs through our classrooms and then collaborating as the leadership team to um, uh, talk about you know what's going well, what's not going well as we go through the school year. And then the bottom one is kind of just ties that back together. Teacher clarity is key to student learning. I may have one, but when we looked, because we talk about the SIP plans, or you just spoke about it, how is how is this going to be quantified in that SIP plan? So um, for student, well, for well, multiple ways. So first of all, the implementation. So that's a monitoring by the principals and by teachers themselves of the implementation of the work, and then. Because of the effect signs, if we're doing a good job at that, we should start to see that student growth and in, in see from students when you, you could walk into a classroom and ask a student what they're learning and why, and they should be able to tell you. So um, a lot of it initially would be around what we're seeing in classrooms and what teachers are doing and what students are doing. And then we would hope, we would hope to see that that would reflect in that 0 0.75, so student learning would increase. So we'd start to see that on our student assessment. Um, anything else to add to part, that? part of it is the first step that we're going to do is actually dig into teacher clarity which are the the um, four different categories so the first one on there is the organization so um in august we're going to start working on the progressions of the standards so they're going to unpack the standards maybe before teachers can be clear about um and clear about the expectations they need to be clear about the standards so there'll be some progressions based on those standards, and that's kind of our first step. So that's what you're going to see is a progression to those standards. Um, and, and then as those roll out, then your learning intentions and your success criteria then uh, builds and is better. And that communication to the students is better. So um, we're really starting on building the capacity of the teachers first. I have, um, I think in that too, we can be collecting data and looking at it like at the beginning of the year of what's happening in our classrooms. And then as we move through, looking at that data as it, as we build capacity for the teachers. Um, it also ties directly back to the teacher's evaluations and um, just a self, you know, research-based best practices for our teachers and for our students. So. Thank you. How is it different than what you're currently doing? So why well, I yeah. Planning is extremely intentional. Um, starting, like I said, starting with the progression speed. So you can take a standard, break that down into everything that kids need to be able to do to say um, to meet that standard. So you're unpacking them into smaller pieces, and then those are delivered to the kids. And then you can measure those with formative assessments to see how the kids are doing on those. Currently, I, I, I think our success criteria, and you guys can speak up if, it, if it's different at your buildings, but currently I feel like we, we do have the standard, but it's quite kind of large um, for your, your, your learning intentions, learning targets, objectives, whatever you want to call it. And then um, coming down to the success criteria. So um, what this is going to do is we're going to have better organization of the materials and the standards. So that we're able to communicate better to the students. Um, I hope that answers your question. But it's it's very, very intentional. The process is very intentional and how it's delivered to kids is very intentional. I think another thing, like sorry, specifically in, at KRB, and I, I think that maybe the other principals will, will agree. Um my classrooms all look different, like their learning intentions and their success criteria all looks different right now. And um, this will give us a real common language and a common understanding so that you can walk into any classroom K-12 and you're going to see somewhat of the same thing. It's hard to, it's hard to weigh. Sorry, Jody. <laughs> no, no, it's still a I'm so there. Okay, yeah, well now. Um, they gave this, in one of the breakout sessions, they gave this example of this lady. I think it was a true story. I think it was Michael and I were in there. So correct me if I'm wrong. But they gave this example of this lady that was swimming from oh, yeah. point A to point B or whatever. And anyways, and it was in open water. It was in the Pacific Ocean. 
and she ended up stopping and they're like and it, it wasn't the sharks it wasn't the coldness it wasn't the hunger that stopped her she was like i did you know it was the fog she just got just it was too much so she stopped she was what was it like a mile, mile or it was a mile away. from the, the she goes away. if i but the fog she couldn't see what she had left and so she didn't know where she was going and so um and i'm doing a terrible job of explaining it but <laughs> what it is basically though is that if she she had said if i knew if i knew if i could see the land if i could see my finish line i would have continued and so we're trying to have not just the teachers or students but the teachers also know like what, what's our finish line what's what are we aiming for this is what we're aiming for and you have to know it you can't just be in a bunch of fog Creates that target once the students see what that target is, the end goal, and the vision to get there. That's basically the visible work. And, and Jesse talks about that alignment mm -hmm. from classroom to classroom, so like third grade room to third grade room, third grade room. You know, we need to provide that guaranteed and viable education. We need to provide consistency for our students. Everybody needs to have the same opportunity to learn, and that can't vary from room to room to room. There's variances in personalities and different things teachers do. That's great. That's fine. But it can't be something different in this classroom for reading and writing than it is in this classroom. So it just depends on which teacher you get. If you learn that, can't be that. Mm -hmm. Does it put restraints on the experienced teachers that have been doing teaching for a while and they have their style and what they want to do? Does it hold them back? And then does it make new experienced teachers? Does, that, does it give them a, a boost? Or I would say no, no, and yes, <laughs> no, because you're still teaching. You're still the teacher. Um, you still have whatever your methods are for reaching kids and how you connect with kids. So they're teaching that it's just. Um, Everyone is working, you know, they're, we're very clear about that. What is it the kids need to learn? And the kids are really clear. That's the big thing. Like kids will, kids will work to learn if they are really clear and they know what it is that they need to learn, but they're not always clear. And that's what this helps to make clear. It's easier for assessments, easier to give them feedback. It's easier for them to evaluate themselves, which is a huge impact. Kids evaluating themselves has a high impact on learning as well. So for the new teacher, it gives them structure. So they know to, like this is the structure we follow. This is for this math unit. These are my, this is my learning intention and my success criteria for this lesson and for this lesson. Because a lot of times, especially when we don't have current adopted curriculum and have things that like, a new teacher walks in that we can hand them and say, here you go, because they need a structure. They they can't make it up. And, and unfortunately, we're asking them to because we haven't always provided that structure for them working on that part too. One of the things in the new curriculum that we had for, I was in a, a third grade classroom the other day and um, I asked if they were doing, it was during reading intervention time. So there were some small groups going, but some independent work happening. And these little boys were reading and I turned to one of them and I go, what's your power goal? Like they all have power goals, right? That what they're working on. And so this little boy was put out that I stopped him to ask him this question because he's like, I need to do X, Y, Z because I'm trying to get um, tested to orange. And like the look on his face was just, I was completely interrupting him and it was stop talking to me. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going and I know why I'm doing it. And so then I go to the next little boy. I go, what are you working on? He's like, um, I am waiting right now for Mrs. Cantu and I'm going to talk to her and I'm going to do my lesson with her. And again, he was also a little put out that um, you were interrupting. I was interrupting, like they knew, like, and that's the thing is like when kids know where they're going and this isn't necessarily like our goal, but when they know where they're going and what, what they're doing, everyone mm -hmm. likes a roadmap. <laughs> Easier to. <laughs> Any other questions? Any questions? Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it was a great conference. I, it really was. Well I, well, I appreciate you giving us an update on on that conference and and kind of where where it's going to go. And honestly, us, so. you know, you we, the two secondary principals were to go, and and that you, you we were afforded the opportunity to thank everyone. That's what's given us the opportunity to do this as a team and do it district wide. Glad to hear that. And we're going to be doing the work in August. So yeah. <laughs> the whole district together. Deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Bailey, get out of this. Where do you go? Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, that's right. Lucky guy. Um, so we'll we'll go back. Uh, is Monica Burnett here? Monica? Teacher, you told me that Amy, I really thought we said seven yesterday. On the we did, but it, we're, we're way ahead of schedule. So no big deal. We kind of Okay. We kind of did. Uh, if I all get there early. I figured. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did some other business. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So the first question is: Tell us about yourself and why you'd like to be a member of the Prosser School Board. Okay. So my name is Monica Burnett, and I've lived in Prosser for 25 years, and my whole um, career since you know has been in education so I started as you guys know from my application um, working at a clinic for the hearing impaired in Southern California and those were preschoolers and then um, I had a nine-year stint in college admissions which is if anybody ever has the opportunity if any of your kids ever have the opportunity an amazing opportunity to work with kids and their families in transition from high school into college. And so, um, and then after that, we relocated to Prosser. And so um, I was going to be a stay-at-home mom and I was most of the time, um, but then I started working at St. Joe's in Sunnyside, then subbing when my kids were in school here, um, subbing in the district and um, got a phone call to please apply up at Patterson. And so I did. And so I've been at Patterson for 20 years now. Um, I have two master's degrees. I have two adult children and three grandsons. The newest one's only a few weeks old. Um, wonderful husband back here. And um, <laughs> so that's, I, I love, as you saw in my application, I love kids. I love school. I love education. Then I have, you know, a big picture view of things that happened um, that, you know, what things might look like in lots of areas. And I love teacher clarity. <laughs> We've been doing that up at Patterson. Okay. <laughs> so what do you believe is most important for, for the Prosser School District? Oh, well, um, I think, and I wrote about this in my application that when I started, uh, when Patterson went to their four day a week, we had to do all kinds of research and um, one of those things, and I did, I've did. i continued doing this for um, every year since we've started that or every few years when we have to reapply, we um, do research on all the local districts and really just compare our scores, test scores, um, to others to make sure that our kids are meeting standard at least at or better than the local, uh, surrounding areas. And honestly, Prosser was our competition. I mean, we were like, oh, yes, okay, we're doing as well as they are, or we're doing, you know, it's for us, 5% is one or two kids. So it's a, it's big jumps. And so, but in the last nine or so years, maybe longer, the scores have been steadily going down here in the Valley and in Prosser. And um, I know a lot of people think Patterson is a, a brain drain, and it's not true, let me tell you. <laughs> it's not a brain drain. A number of our kids who come up there are on IEPs and all kinds of other things, so it's not that. Um, but I think one of the things we need to do is really look, we need to afford every single child the best quality education we need with them. They need to be able to go to Whatever they're doing after college, after high school, if it's a two-year college, a four-year college, a trade school, the military to work, they need to be going able to, to perform. And um, I have heard from a number of kids and saw it in my own daughter when she went to, and I told Matt this story many years ago, um, when she, and she graduated from here with honors in the top 10 and with a great scholarship to where she went um, her freshman year in college. The professor for biology, she was pre-med, said, you guys can just return that book, that biology textbook. That's expected knowledge. We're going to move on from here. And she went to him afterwards and she said, I don't think you understand where I came from. 
And he said, I don't care where you came from. You might want to keep your book. And, and she really, and she's a hard worker, struggled in the, in the sciences. Um, she would call me often and say, if I don't get an A on this calculus test, Mr. Colgren would kill me. So um, that was always good. But, you know, there were, there were weak spots that need to be fixed. And, and we're seeing that in the state testing. And, and you guys are seeing that, you know, I, I watch or listen and, and hear things. And so I know there's, there's great need for improvement, which is why teacher clarity is being proposed, you know, and so there needs to be a lot of support for the staff. There needs to be a ton of support for the staff because it's a lot of work to do a good job in a classroom. It's a ton of work. Uh, as a board member, what would you do if a community member or parent complained to you? Um, well, first, it shouldn't come to the board first. That would be first thing I, mean, I would ask the person. Have you talked to the teacher? Have you, if it's especially if it's a parent, have you talked to the teacher? Have you talked to, have you worked up the chain of command? Um, it should not go to a board member first. And I would ask that it not. If it's a community member who doesn't have kids in the classroom, um, then that probably would be where they would think they would need to turn to is say, I've heard this. And I would probably, you know, respond to them and say, let me look into that for you. But have you gone to the, you know, whatever school it is and talked to the powers that be there? Because really the people who are in the schools know what's happening. And they're the paid professionals here in this district. And they're the ones who we should rely on. But there has to be a chain of command and there has to be written reports at every level. All of those meetings between parents and or um, community members and somebody else needs to be recorded so that when it gets to a board member, we can look at it and go, hey, all of this has happened and are we all on the same page? What is missing for you? Because really most people, they just want what's best for kids. They don't really wanna be curmudgeons. They just want what's best for kids and, and to make sure that their kids or their grandkids or their neighbor's kids or whoever are safe and learning what they can and that their taxpayers' dollars are being spent wisely. What is your current stance on the safety and security policy? Well, I, um, you know, we have, obviously there's issues across the country. And so um, they're definitely, obviously making all of the um, improvements so that there's the one entrance everywhere. Um, it's all it's all really important. I think you know, um, making sure it's a all the gun free zones and all of that, and only the people who are supposed to have any kind of um, weaponry are allowed with it on campus anywhere. Um, and there's always some room for improvement, but I think you know we have a pretty safe environment here. I mean, I know there have been lockdowns and there have been. People have called in threats and things like that. Um, and there should be response right away from not only the um, principals there, but the um, district office should be right on top of that as well. And working with the local, um, I know the ESD set up so that they have somebody that OSPI has made sure at each ESD, there's someone who will help make sure that there's a safety um, plan in place where you work with your local law enforcement and your mental health people and all of the different groups and you come to the table together and they will help with that and facilitate that so that there's a really solid plan but you have to have it at all of those levels you have to have mental health in there you have to have parents on board you have to have the safety um, and security in that things locked down I mean, everything's new, so it should all be working um, uh, so that it all locks down. Um, people know what it means and that there's immediate feedback to like when there's a lockdown that people, parents outside can hear about it right away. So, you know, you certainly couldn't have, Deanna's not principal anymore. She was principal when I subbed, but um, the principal at the schools, um, getting on Facebook and putting that on when they're dealing with an issue there. 
there has to be somebody who can do that so that everybody outside also knows because if your child is there you're going to be pretty worried and so um and then there's also that's major safety but there's also the safety of bullying anti-bullying all of that and you know there's just so much going on and honestly since covid things have gotten worse and i know you've seen that and it's national where people just need a lot more support they need the they need the counseling, they need the social worker, they need the food services. There's just so much that people are angry or upset or don't know, anxious, don't know where to go. And so there's threats from within the building, not just from without the building. So all of that needs to be taken into consideration. In your opinion, what types of schools should Prosser have? Say that one more time. In your opinion, what types of schools should Prosser have? Interesting. So what types of schools should we have? Well, we have to serve all of our students. So we have, what we have is what we're working with. Um, so I would think that, um, I know there's a pretty, pretty good, I mean, I know some kids who are doing the online program now through the district, which I think is really good for some kids. Um, the high school, you know, has lots of venues for kids to discover where they need to be so that it's, you know, a comprehensive school and it serves everybody. Um, I, I think personally, I love neighborhood schools. Um, we're not going to be building anything new anyway. So we're, we're kind of have what we have and I think we just have to make them the best we can. Um, I like smaller schools, small neighborhood schools. Um, but working with what we have is most important. And so what should those schools look like? They should look like vibrant um, places where there's lots of good learning taking place at all levels. So the kids that are in the resource room most of the time um, with the highest needs, the, and, and this I have never seen happen here, but when I worked in at the John Tracy Clinic and I went to the school for the deaf and blind in Los Angeles, there were kids who were just left sitting in wheelchairs, no stimulation. It was horrendous. So every single kid serves, every single kid deserves the best possible education we can give them. So in the schools we have, we have to make sure they're vibrant for everybody and that kids are known by name <clears throat> and kids are known for what they know and love. Their teachers know and love them. They know things about them. They, you know, are high-fiving them and, and you know, saying have a great afternoon, a great evening, taking them out to the buses. Um, it should be really run so that it's student-centered and the teachers, and so to me, the kind of school you have are where teachers are empowered to do what's best for kids. So they're professionals and they know what to do and they're in line with each other and we, and we trust them to do what needs to be done so that our kids, all of our kids, can learn to read and write and do some math so that they aren't struggling because we all know nationally kids need to be in algebra. You need to have them passing algebra. I sat with, you have some amazing, amazing special ed teachers here. And I sat with them today because every year when we bring some of our, if we have special ed kids who come down, we come and transition them. And there's amazing work happening with that. And I said, you know, there's this, you know, this child wants to do whatever. You know, we have a couple, so <laughs> construction. I said, you know, he really needs algebra. And they said, oh, 100%, all of our kids will get algebra, our special ed kids that are, in, you know, able to do it. They will all have it, which warms my heart because he wants to, he has no plans on going to a university or a four-year program or even a two-year program. He wants to do tri-tech, but he has to have algebra. And he should be able to. There should not be a limit on the, any of these kids. If they want to try it, let them try it. You know, I've gone to lots of trainings um, through college admissions with the college board and then through Gear Up um, with college board and AP and some pre-AP classes and springboard through the college board. And the college board statements always have been, these are not gateway classes. These are not gatekeeping classes. Everybody should be able to go into them. If kids want to work hard and do them, they should be allowed into them. And we should be challenging them. It, I'm going to tell you honestly, it frustrates me 
that, oh, we only had six kids who wanted calculus, so we're not going to have it. Really? No, we have it for six, and next week we have eight, and then maybe we have 12. We dream, we build, we dream for them. I mean, that's what Peggy and I used to always say. We dream for them. We dream for the kids who, you know, there's a, a great, and I heard him speak, a great man who um, started the I Have a Dream Foundation because he went to an inner city school in New York and he said to a little three-year-old, so what, what do you dream of doing? And he said, what's a dream? What's a dream? Well, if we have kids who don't know how to dream, we dream for them and we offer them ideas and we give them opportunity. We give them, we show them things. So I've been listening a lot about you know, redoing the whole stadium area. And yes, it's some ice words out there, but we have this grant that we've been doing up at Patterson and it's, it, it we've been paying some of it. So it's kind of can be expensive, but I think there's some good grant money out there for landscaping that is all the native plants. And if you could make a walking tour of it and you had like one of our uh, um, one of the kids who graduated from here a few years ago, who's in an architectural landscaping program at UW, and he's very much involved in natural landscapes. Um, and so, and if he would be willing to do that, you could have that be a place where kids can come and sketch. So they're doing art and science, where they're learning what native plants are, they're learning what erosion's about, how to protect our land from erosion, how to keep things from burning down because we put plants out there that are natural barriers to things. It's amazing what our kids have learned doing that. And then like I have suggested, I'm not in charge anymore, so it doesn't matter what I suggest if they do it or not, but the FFA kids or the ag kids would then collect the seeds and start growing those in the greenhouses because they're very expensive to buy native plants and, <clears throat> and provide that for ourselves. And so then we're training kids. I don't know if you guys saw this in the news a couple of weeks ago in New York. This teacher, he, he just won a huge award for being green, but he has had kids in our city. We're going nowhere. And they have learned to do, like they're doing roofs, rooftop landscaping. I mean, we can do all kinds of things for our kids. Even, you know, they don't have to go to a four-year school four-year college, but there's so many things. So I don't know what the buildings look like, but I do know what the schools look like. They look like places where kids are supported, teachers are supported. We dream for them, we push for them, we hope for them, and we give them the funding they need. Thank you. We do have probably seven or eight more questions. Okay, sorry, I'm a talker. You probably saw uh, that, I'm also a writer. <laughs> uh, Currently, Patterson still owes Prosser money from the last bond to build the high school. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I will be quite honest with you, and Matt can t attest to this. He and I um, talked um, often. I'd send a note. It would be months, big job down here, before I heard anything. And then it would be, let's know now. And so the latest with Joe, um, I, I know that there was an agreement and it came to you guys and it was not approved. And we had had the lawyer write it up because it was told that that was something you guys said yes to ahead of time and it wasn't approved. And so I think that Patterson's willing to pay their a fair share, but this building was built for a larger number of kids than are here and it should be based on that. And so um, there, there's, it's, it's not a hard, hard thing to come up with. It's not tens of millions of dollars, but um, but those have those numbers have been run <laughs> lots of times, and the numbers have come out. And I don't know what all the ins and outs are, but I do know what's happened up there. And there's been a couple of really um, good. And I'll be honest, some of the people are like, huh. Oh, we don't really want to send that money down. I'm like, you don't really have a choice when I was in, in the superintendent's chair. And so we had to come to agreements, but it took a long time to get things from down here, to be honest. And so it kind of was frustrating up there. They're like, well, if they're going to wait six or seven or eight months before they come back with anything, why do they want it back from us next week? And it's pretty frustrating. What are your beliefs in being part of a team and how would you work with the other board members and the superintendent to come about positive resolutions? Oh yeah. Okay. I'm really, I think a very good team member and 
I know I don't maybe sound it right now, but I'm pretty humble um, as far as things like that go, because I think listening is really important. And there's a lot of different um, outlooks, right? So I'm going to come with with where I have my experience, 25 years in, or more than that, 30 years in education from different backgrounds. Um, and people are, in a, and as a parent, and people are going to come from all these different ways. And everybody, I would everybody's trying to do what's best for kids. So you have to look at that and you have to look at, okay, are we serving all who, what's this point? So we have the, like, right, Deanna's working on the strategic goals with everybody. So we get those strategic goals. And so if, which is a great thing, let me just suggest this, tell you about strategic clarity when we went, started it. Maybe you're a kinder or first grade teacher and you love dinosaurs and you have a unit on it and you want to do it, but that's not part of your standard and you're not getting kids to a standard with that, you have to give it up, right? So if we have this goal, we have this thing we're going to, and we really love that we always do X, Y, and Z, but it's not getting us there, then we have to go, okay, we love that. It did its thing at some point, but we need to get to here. And this is over here. It's not getting us here. And people need to come to that. Um, and knowledge together and see that um, there's nothing wrong with disagreeing as long as people come with the same idea that we're all here for the kids and to reach those goals that we've set as a district and that the community has helped set and that you guys would adopt and then hold um, the superintendent to making sure that happens and that job for the person who gets that job after Matt moves to Oregon, lucky you, <laughs> the beach, um, that that person would then be, you know, everything that they do with the suit, with the administrators who are here would be, how is it coming? How are we reaching this? How is, how does the A team, I'm assuming we still have at the high school, how does that help us reach a goal? How does this help us? And is it because we know from statistics that if kids are involved, they're doing better so that you can say this helps because of this. So um, all of that, but people have to be really open to everything's on the table and maybe something doesn't come back that we loved, but we loved it. But, you know, maybe, I don't know if it happens anymore, the Mustang auction, maybe it's gone. Maybe it's not. Maybe it can be made into a learning experience, you know, but we have to start thinking along a lot of those lines because there are limited resources and limited in, in not just money, but time and personnel. Um, <clears throat> at times, the role of a leader calls us to make unpopular decisions. What are your what are your thoughts and beliefs about making decisions that are not always received well by the public and not for public disclosure? Okay, so um, I'm going to break that into two things, if you don't mind. So not perceived well by the public, but the public can know why. So for example, in the past few years, masking was not received well by a lot of people in the public. And it was very difficult. People were very, very split on it and not kind around it. And you still had a law. There's a law and that's what we do because guess what? We are a public school that's given public dollars and we are not private. We do what we're supposed to do because that's the law. Just like we would want all of our kids to grow up and obey the laws, right? So, um, so we do that. And yeah, people hated, hated it and they hated me for it. And I got called all kinds of pretty horrible things because I'm like, if anything, you guys, I'm law abiding. And so I'm going to do that. I mean, I go down Sellards Road and I hate it, but we go, it's 50 and we'll push it to 55. <laughs> and I mean, I'm the people are zipping by me at 90. It's the law. Then not only is it the law, it's safe, right? And it's, I have no right to go 90 miles an hour down a road and maybe hit an animal spin out and somebody's coming my, the other way and now people are dead because I decided to go 90 and I couldn't stop in time, right? And so, so there are things that the public can know. Then there are things that our personnel 
or maybe some other issues, mostly personnel, that the public can't know. And that's unfortunate, but they can't. And so they just have to go, they have to see if they trust us, if they trust that when we can let them know everything, we let them know everything. We're not hiding things. So we let them know. If they trust us, then we can say, please trust us. This is, you can't know everything, but this is what's happened. This is what's going on or not going on, but this is the decision and there's nothing coming back on it. Okay. So the second part of that, um, so will you be able, will this be difficult for you to, to do? Mm -mm. Okay. Not at all. Uh, school boards operate best when they are honest, open-minded, solution-oriented, and committed to the children in the community. If you're appointed, do you believe you can maintain these traits? Oh, 100%. 100%. School boards vote, let me just, I believe, 100% with what you said, that's exactly how they should work. Not my politics, or your politics, or Lisa's politics, or Peggy's politics, or Jeannie's politics. It's not our political position. It's a nonpartisan position, right? It's all about the kids. It's their education. It's their property right by the Constitution of the United States. It's a property right. We cannot infringe on that. We need to promote it and give it to them the best we possibly can. And so 100%, what you read is exactly what it should be. Uh, in the work that we do, it is often the case that others, whether board members or community members, may not share the same opinion that you hold. How would you work through a disagreement with an individual? <clears throat> disagrees with me, Jason. Just, I'm sorry, what? I'm just kidding. I said nobody ever disagrees <laughs> with me. Um, <laughs> um, I really am pretty, I'm very willing to listen to people and talk with people. And sometimes people aren't going to agree. We're just not going to, which is why there are five people, right? And so the whole community is not going to agree. Sometimes two-thirds of the community might want something to happen, and two-thirds of the board agree with that. Two, you know, one-third doesn't want it to happen. So, you know, there might be times where somebody says, no, I'm not going to vote with that, or I'm going to abstain from that, because, and that's, that's their prerogative. Um, but there are some things the board has to come together on. You know, so you can't, we can't go out and ask, I don't know, the community to support something when we're split up on it. We have to come to some agreements on things where we're asking for a lot of support, right? And so, um, and then there are issues that may be really just political hot button issues, right? That might not even be really depth but there's just words that are used out there and people make people angry. And sometimes you just have to define terms. When I was growing up, my dad, I'm the youngest of 14, so 10 girls in the house. My dad would say to us, let's define some terms here. <laughs> okay, what are you guys really talking about? What do you really mean? And when we can get down to what we really mean, that's really helpful. And if there's a real problem and you can dig down, you know, the, um, the root cause analysis, why, 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 why? So we finally get down to the why, and then we can figure it out. But a big thing in education is knowing your why. In the board, we need to know our why. Why are we here? What's our job? Have we all taken training from WASA or WASTA to make sure we know the laws, to really make sure that we know what our role is, to make sure we're not doing things we shouldn't be doing, and to be able to say to the community, I get what you're saying, that really belongs with the principal. That, that's not my job. That's, that's the professionals that we're paying for to do that. If you can't get what you need done, and then you've gone further to the superintendent, come back and talk to me. And then I'll, I'll see what I can, you know, make sure that some people are working on it. Or maybe that's the best you're going to get. You're not going to get your way sometimes. see okay as a leader there are many perspectives or filters that you will use to think about potential decisions what is best for the students risk and liability legality and tradition versus innovation how would you work through a complex decision and the pros and cons in order to come to the best resolution okay so um 
I know this is not popular with pot with maybe the parents, but the legality and the liability are huge on some issues. And that's hard because it's not, I don't, you know, parents might be like, well, I don't care about that. I want this, right? But we still have to, we have to be fiscally responsible and we have to not get our, our district in trouble with lawsuits and things like that. And then tradition and um uh, what was the second part of that one? Tradition versus innovation. Innovation. Um, <laughs> I think sometimes we have to, and I wrote in my paper, we stand on the shoulders of the people who came before us, right? And so all the people who have done hard work in this valley and have built this beautiful building we're in and have rebuilt schools, um, everybody has put effort into the public schools here and so some tradition is good it's great there are some great traditions some traditions they're not good and and they have gone by the wayside and when you're standing on the shoulders of those people you can look back and you can say wow you know that was probably not a very good idea <laughs> it's good that things have changed it's good that we now are more inclusive of different kinds of people and different things like that. So people aren't on the outside all the time, right? So we're, more, we're doing this. But you then you see pictures, like I've seen some nostalgic pictures of um, Prosser in the 70s and they're having the big rallies downtown. And how fun is that? And how fun would that be to work with the um, Chamber of Commerce and the Historic Downtown Society to really bring, not bring back a heyday, you don't wanna do that, but bring forth something new that really invigorates, right? The, and, and, and gets people behind us, behind the schools. Um, and so there are some great things that can do, that can happen that you can learn from the old things that were great and maybe put a new twist on them and do something. And then there are some things that are just really fun and really wonderful. Graduation is an amazing tradition. It's a huge tradition. It's an important, important step for people and it's not something that should be taken lightly or thrown together at the last minute it's a big stepping stone moving from one school to another is a big stepping stone and so there are things that should happen but then there are some things that you know sometimes when I was at so when I was at Gonzaga I love tradition I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie I love tradition so when I was at Gonzaga, I was in a, a not a sorority, we didn't have them, but a group of service, it's girls called the Spurs, which now they're called the Seatons. So it was the Spurs when I was there. And their thing, every Tuesday we bought donuts and we had to walk around campus with them and sell them. And so the girls, we didn't necessarily want to do that, but it was the tradition. And so it kind of became quite the fight. And so we did it. But boy, I'll tell you, the people who didn't want to do it, they didn't do it. So people had to double up and eventually it all stopped because it was a silly kind of thing. You don't have to do that. But, you know, some people were like, but it's tradition. People want their donuts on Tuesdays. And so well, really can't they get them somewhere without us carrying them around campus all day long? So, so there are some things that you need to change. And there are some things that they are beautiful traditions and should stay like, you know, the National Honor Society having a beautiful event, that's a great tradition. So. Okay. Is there anything else that you would like to share with the board? Well, I am really glad that you asked about Patterson because um, I, was, I was thinking that you guys might think, is would she have a conflict of interest? <laughs> I do love Patterson 100%. Um, but I also, I love kids and I love education and I'm a pretty fair level-headed person. Um, and so um, Peggy can attest to this. I was probably harder on my own kids when I taught them than anybody else's kids that have ever walked through my classroom. And so I would have higher expectations of, of that, you know, Patterson, that they would work politely and, and ethically um, with, Pat, with Prosser. And so I don't think I would have a conflict of um, a conflict for you guys to have to worry about. I'm, I'm, my values don't have would not allow for that. However, 
if it seemed like that, then I would have, I would be, if you guys asked for me to abstain from something, I would be able to do that. But I would be, to be quite honest, I can, I can make pretty good decisions, pretty fair, level headed. Uh, Leslie, do you have any questions for us? I really don't. I have followed a lot of things and I, um, you know, you guys know that I was superintendent at Patterson for three years during COVID. Um, so I've worked with boards. I would definitely want the um, training for this particular, you know, for the board and what you guys, you know, I don't know if you've gone through all the training with this um, organization, but to really get that so that we're really all on the same page. I think that would be good even if, mm -hmm. if um, even if you, we did that together so that everyone were on the same page of what our roles are. Um, so is that a training you guys have all done? The WASDA training, have you all had that? They have a boot camp? No. Okay. See, I think that would be a really great thing. If everybody were had that training, which actually by law we're supposed to, um, not that they all do it. Um, you know, a part of it's online. It's a boot camp. You get seventy five dollars. Everybody can go through it. There's lots of things to learn, and it gives you direction of what we're supposed to be doing. So I think that would be a really good thing. So I would ask that we would maybe do that, um, so that everybody's really clear. And I think also to let the community know that that's what would be be happening. So that, and even let them know these are really what our roles are so that it's really clear to people. So I would ask if that's, I'm glad to know that, kind of glad to know you haven't done it so that that could be done with a whole as a group. I think that would be good. Have you guys in the, since I don't know with, with Ray, I know it happens. So I don't know if it's happened since, have you gone over to Olympia and like taken the um, high school kids with you and done all of that? Would that be? That was before I was here. Okay. So um, I don't know if that would be I something I attended online. Oh, okay. That was your before last. No, that that was different, Jeannie. We did yeah. the was the um, legislative session yeah. like opener, but Not we since, haven't gone to Olympia no, and attended. Not since of COVID. Because of COVID. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know if that would be something you would want to look at yeah. um, doing um, so that I would just ask if there were things that would be taking place during the work days that I would have good enough advance notice to be able to get the time, which my boss is supportive of. So those would be the kinds of things I would wonder about, okay. making sure that I would have the the time to, ahead of time to make sure I can get the days I need. Okay. okay. Well, thank you very much. Well, Monica. thank you. Thanks for your time. Is uh, Frank from Home Online? The last name again? Vermon, V E R M U L M. I, they do, they're not on, or I don't see their name in the people in the call. Unless the <clears throat> you're speaking up either. He, so I the he was scheduled for 7 30, I think. Yeah, yes. Yeah. About so 15 minutes if, early. If, if we, if we want to go to the regular den again, I they ask we do the arts adoption update because I have some teachers there that probably would like to go home okay. after a long day of teaching. But if we could do the arts adoption and the other stuff that would be awesome. Okay, well, we'll go back to the regular agenda and we will go to item B, arts adoption under uh, informational items. And I know that... Um, Dan Norris is, I think, watching from his classroom, so he's probably zipping up the stairs right now. But <laughs> go ahead and go to his is towards the end. So if you could put the PowerPoint up again for you, we need to do the art so, so, so this is the update that um, we were. I was asked to to bring to the board because we did adopt a new arts um, curriculum this year, as well as updated instruments and some new programming for for the different um, schools. And so uh, if you can go to the next slide. So we now use, are using, I knew you zipped right up from downstairs, right? Um, <laughs> it, it 12, so we, we now are using it for pre-K also because we have our um, transitional kindergarten class at Riverview. 
Um, we purchase curriculum, instruments, supplies, music, all kinds of things. We also established funds for a pair of instruments and arts needs. Um, Dan was um, kind of, you know, rigging up everything he could on instruments that needed repair. There were instruments that were very old that really needed to be replaced because we do have some instruments that we own, not just necessarily student instruments. And then we also developed a K-12 arts scope and sequence for the district. Go ahead, Blake. So each of the schools um, contributed some, some things. Mrs. Uh, Bray, it, what, she was not able to attend tonight, so I'll be sharing her pieces and Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Smith was not able to attend. So go ahead and keep going. Uh, this is from Mrs. Bray's class. So they're using vocabulary. Um, vocabulary, she has a word wall for her music class. Um, and this comes from information from her curriculum. So the kids are learning different musical terms. Go ahead. Now there's some video. So, um, and these are some of the things that have come from the new curriculum. <laughs> music and movement, um, that's a second grade, I think a second grade group of students. Um, go ahead, Blake. Oh, <laughs> and this is also from Mrs. Bray's class. This is another um, part of her curriculum where the students are using scarves. Oh. Very good. several of our uh, wonderful instructors here. So the, these slides are from Mandy Stevens. She's at the Heights. Yeah, I think I'm yes, and okay. probably you have to come up. If you guys could just come up and even if you stand, you just see you're closer to the little box right there. All right, so um, this is not quite in sequence. This is our visual arts. Um, this is third grade. We were learning about color theory. So we took three, uh, well, we took the three primary colors and used, so watercolor pencils and we created all the other um, secondary and tertiary colors. So they're learning the vocabulary, they're learning formulas to create those. Um, so I do try to apply math. I also talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary related to the um, language arts as well, since I was a former language arts teacher, just to include um, common vocabulary. And I think, I don't know what the next picture is. So here we have, um, so I do music, dance, visual arts, and theater. Um, I couldn't find my music, I mean, my dancing videos, but at the beginning of the year, we did Las Mochetas, um, along with um, some, some visual arts that went with this. Um, finally got the recorders going so that I was kind of doing a lot of the same things that Wistran was doing. Um, so we have our recorders here. Um, every child has has access to one. Um, our migrant, or actually our bilingual program supplied them, supplied a recorder for every student in our um, school that was migrant. Um, many students have their own. I also have a class set that I am able to uh, wash and go through. Um, I'm using a recorder karate, as well as our new curriculum has really big posters. And then also we have a second curriculum music play online that also has extra additional music um, and tutorials on there. So students have access to that through the student code. Um, yeah, it's actually really, it's really cool. Um, 
I just enjoy it. I think I'm, play I think I'm a little crazy because I enjoy it so much. This is our singing. Um, we have, this is actually the third grade bilingual um, class. Um, they were performing um, Soul Soldier, um, which is an original song from the music curriculum, um, Music Play Online. Um, you don't have to play the whole thing, but if you want to see them, this is our third graders. You should hear the very last when it's like, hey, it's the finale. Um, and then I think I have one more slide. So we also have done um, this particular group, third grade, or sorry, fifth grade. Um, I was working with a, um, a source out of Seattle um, to develop a lesson on theater. Um, I was also collaborating with fifth grade to talk about ecosystems and our um, Oh man, I'm going to mess it up. The food chain, and also consumers and producers. And so, um, each group broke up, and they created their own tableaus, and they had their own lines. Um, and so, this is just—it is really fast. These are—I uh, don't know which ecosystem they had. They—I I might be able to tell you after I watch. But this is just a small snippet of a pretty funny group. I'm the chef. I've been fighting so like. The, the the energy side of I am reeds, I take energy from the sun. I am a dragonfly and I eat the reeds. I am a snake and I eat the dragonfly. Oh. I'm a beetle and I eat dead snakes. <laughs> <laughs> they were going through all the producers and consumers there. And I think that is Oh, again. So then this would be um fourth and fifth grade. I've been building this program um this year, this is the second year I've um, really been able to do the program. So it's fourth and fifth grade, we're talking more about color theory. And then we um, use different tints and shades to create the color wheel um, as a final project. And yeah. Thank you. Oh, and here's the third graders with all of their lovely little ice cream cone rainbows. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was done. <laughs> so, um, so kinder or not kinder, third grade, we were doing one point perspective. Um, fourth and fifth, we're working on two point perspective. I believe those are both my examples, but um, students are also working on that. We just completed that. We're done and moving into clay right now. It's fine. It's all that's third grade. <laughs> Wendy. She was here. So this is with Strand. Um, I Wendy was here. I'm not sure where she went, but um, this is some examples of some of the work that her students have done. Um, and her, uh, she's used also using some of the using some of the same curriculum. Keep going. I don't think she had. Not sure if there. I don't think there was videos. Oops. Go back one. So this is where they did some um, folkloric dance, and they uh, did that with the with their students. Keep going. This is an example. She did a screenshot of Music Play Online, which is one of the curriculums that we purchased, and it shows 
and it has it I mean it's like any other curriculum you can go in and choose by you know maybe what type of instruments there's lessons for all the grade levels um they have you know the ability to hear examples um uh, it's I mean, I think it's really opened up the opportunities for the for the teachers to do some things that they, they weren't able to do before. Go one more. And this is just, uh, I, I, I think this is a video, isn't it? You can hear some recorders. Go. Now, my oldest daughter is 36, and we used to do recorders, and it kind of went away for a long time, but I think she can still play hot cross buns. I mean, <laughs> she wants to recorder. Okay, go ahead. Go. go. Oh, go. And then Jake Hatch is here. He's our new middle school high, our teacher. He, he started October? November. November. He came, came rolling in, so... Go ahead, Jake. Uh, yeah, so I'm not as good as Manny at documenting everything, so I'm going to have to take notes on that. Um, but these are just a few examples of what been, we've been working on. Um, I can speak towards the curriculum being very helpful in the scope and sequence for me to be able to hop in and figure out where uh, students are supposed to be at. Uh, we have sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade scope and sequence um, pages, I believe. And it's been very useful for me just coming in in the middle of the year, trying to figure out exactly where students are at artistically. Um, here we got a personal portrait and then students applying some of the things that Mandy has talked about using a uh, two point perspective to draw buildings and such. Um, and imagine that in that environment. Um, for the most part, I've been trying to play catch up and figure out where our students are coming from and how to get them to apply some new artistic things. So we've been doing art history a little bit um, and working at getting students new artistic tools to put in their toolbox. Um, we've been doing clay as well. And then one of my biggest things is pushing digital in with the eighth graders. Um, that's been through Adobe Creative Suites as much as possible because that's industry standard. And I want them to have those tools as they go forward. Uh, that's been a big thing for me is more uh, mediums, more media, so then they can use those in their toolbox and they can pull it out whenever they may need it in the future as a hobby, career. And um, so that's there's, more there's, more. Some, there's, there's another slide. Uh, yeah. yeah, so this is uh, that middle one is a student using uh, pop art for their personal portrait. Um, so that sort of thing is in implementing other artists' ideas onto your art. So then you have a grasp of what others are doing and maybe you can get more creative and build off of that. Uh, again, I'm sorry for not being uh, documenting better, but um, I thought lesson plans might be a little important. So I wanted to show actual art. Now you know. Now yeah, you know. I, that's great. That's very helpful. <laughs> thank you. But, yeah. All right, thank you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then Dan. Yeah. Is representing the second uh, high school and middle school music. And I'm not sure what happened to music. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> so, yeah. so we can go to the next slide. So I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. Meyer, choir and guitar teacher as well. Uh, choir curriculum, this has been something in the choir world that they've been working on throughout about the last five years, trying to become more standardized because before that there was really no way to level if this piece of choir music is this difficulty, this one's this difficulty, what are the skills? So this actually came out of University of Washington over the last few years, the CLAS, and it levels what those skills are that each student at those various levels needs to be able to do. And so with that, you know, we have all the way from level one, a beginning singer, all the way to up to level four, who might be going into a college choir, professional choirs, and what those different skills, and it's amazing things that you would think would be easier actually on the harder levels and vice versa. And I think it's kind of similar to early reading and things like that, where you might be surprised, oh, that's actually a more advanced skill than that. And so he's been working on getting that to be a more standards-based grading, especially because we get beginning high school seniors in choir, and we get singers in middle school that are, you know, a slightly more experienced singer. We can go to the next slide. And then with Mr. Maya coming on two years ago, we added the guitar program as well, 
which we have not had, and there was a lot of demand for it, which was awesome. And so the curriculum that he uses for that is a standard guitar method book that takes them through all the way from the very beginning, how to hold it, how to tune it, all the way into skills that I don't even quite have yet on guitar. Um, and so it just brings those students to the point where they can become independent musicians. Ideally, then they could go and perform on their own and experience and explore some more. And so with that part of when we brought that class on, we can go to the next slide. We did add in a curriculum department, purchase 20 guitars that we can let students use and check out, as well as a lot of students bring their own. We've had to add guitar racks for storage as we've added the classes, because we've built in 24 guitar lockers, not even having a guitar program yet. And now we're also filming those racks that are backstage, which is awesome. Um, and so a lot of students have their own guitars and are bringing them as well. And we can go to the next slide. And band, I actually came to this coming out of having been teaching choir and doing that CLAS as well, finding those different skill levels. So I this I developed on my own just because I needed something to hit those high school beginners and those sixth graders that are taking private lessons and everywhere in between. Mm -hmm. And so like right now we're doing skills testing. We do a monthly skills test at the high school and we're on month eight and I had students that are beginners that tested today and they're at level A and I had some of my seniors that are at level F and G and they're doing very different testing but we can still work on everything at the same time because the seniors that are working on that beginning tune, they're working on playing it at a higher level, playing with different skills, playing with better tone and being that example for the others. And the beginners are being exposed to those harder skills. And so that's one of the ways that we've tried to make sure we're meeting the students where they're at. Because it used to be that you just show up in band and you're there and you get the grade and that's it, but really wanting to move to more of a, that the grade means something. Mm -hmm. And so that's an example of the level D that would be a typical freshman who's been in band for three years. And those are the skills that we ask them to perform during a year. We can go to the next. One of the things that I've been wanting to do for a long time, kind of like we have repair and maintenance fund for school buses, band instruments wear out. And we've it's always been, okay, we have this little bit of money. Do we have a little bit more to fix this? Oh, this broke too. Can we fix that? And so having just a predictable amount that we could plan on year to year, uh, which lets us start replacing things because otherwise we're just patching things up. The example we gave the timpani, which are the kettle drums, they were from pre-1947. And I know that because that's when the company changed its name. And so... And so we were able to, that was a one-time purchase. They are very expensive. They were 15,000 per set of four. Um, but we were able to get that new set and the students, when they came in, they could hear the difference. They can tune them easily and they'll last us, hopefully not 75 years, but <laughs> if we can get, you know, a good 40 or 50 years out of them because they're good quality instruments. Um, with that repair replacement fund, last year we were able to repair 30 instruments that had basically been sitting in, sitting and being neglected. And then this year we purchased some more instruments because our program is starting to grow. One of the goals that I had when I came in was making sure that any student that wants to be in band can do it, not, you know, with cost not being an issue. And so my first couple of years we were giving out five or 10 school instruments and for loan, we're probably at 50% of the students are borrowing an instrument from the school right now. And it's expensive to maintain, but we've got a good start with that fund that we're doing. And so far, again, every student that wants to be in there, at least cost is not the reason. And so we're able to do that. And then we can go to the next slide. We're continuing to do active performance schedule, whether it's choir or band. Um, festivals. We can go to the next slide. I think there's a few more pictures. So doing the parades, doing the field shows, Southern California trip, uh, playing in state basketball, and really performing is that payoff. You know, the students don't do band so that they can take that test once a month. The, <laughs> the, the payoff is the performances. So like this year, I think we're up to 41 performances when we put all the pep band games and everything else in the parades. So, you know, we try to be that good piece of crosser wherever we go. And we can go to the next slide. 
uh, this is just, I'd been tracking program numbers since I came in. And the total there is the one that I keep an eye on. We took a big hit with COVID. Um, BAN was one of the hardest things possible to do during COVID. Some programs on the west side of the state, I know, went to even a third of their numbers beforehand. And so my it, as you kind of track down from year to year, the middle school, high school, we shrank a lot. My beginning band two years ago when we were virtual, I had 12 students. And this year I've got 47 students. And so we actually had to split that class because I can't fit 47 beginners in that middle school band room. And so good problems like that, that hopefully we keep creating good problems for you guys and we'll continue building on that in the future years. So okay. that's what I'm here. I think that's, that's my good. last slide. Thank you. Thank oh. you. Okay. Kyla, who is not able to be here, she just did a should have those slides about some of the things that they had purchased because when we moved into this building, there wasn't like kind of got missed in having cases to display the artwork in the plan. And that's through, I mean, we go through that with the, the designers as well as with the staff, just something that was forgotten. So we we're able to purchase some of those items so the students' work could be displayed. Um, and then also some funds to replace some of the things like teachers get by with a lot, like they get by or they replace it themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so to help offset them, the art, the arts are expensive, um, more expensive than maybe just paper that you might need for a class or pencil. Keep going. Those are some of the things that she, she needed that we were able to purchase. Go ahead. Um, and then they talked about the, this was uh, an addition for the curriculum. Um, Pro, Pro Flex, Pro and Flex, which is the staff development and the curriculum, which was purchased for the middle school and the high school for the, both of their art programs. It's all on demand, it's online, and so it's very accessible. Go ahead. This is the theater arts. Um, I, to be honest, Mr. SD, I didn't hear back from him, so I did this slide. Um, we did set money aside for the future purchase of scripts. At the time, he was not he wasn't, he had scripts already kind of lined up, so he wasn't anxious to buy anything, but he, when he's ready, he will, he'll be able to purchase some new scripts. And this is just a picture from the most recent, um, the most recent production. I think that's the end. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, I think it's great that we're investing, continue to invest in grow our programs. We are, we are. Yeah, very well done. Um, and one thing I did notice the last time we talked about arts or had this presentation, uh, the rooms were a lot darker and everything, but I really noticed how well the rooms are lit. And it seems like a really good environment for those kids. So yeah, and arts, I mean, there are our teachers, honestly, I, I, a couple, I made the, put the PowerPoint together. They did their slides, prepared everything except for a few things. They're the ones that did all that because they're the ones doing all the work. So very yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. All right, I think I see Frank up there. Yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Oh. Um, all right, Frank, we got a few questions. Uh, first one is, tell us about yourself and why would you why you would like to be a member of the Prosser School Board? Well, I'm uh, 54 years old. I have um, 11 kids and um, we, we schooled our kids at home. It was a choice that we made. Um, I've been a coach for, oh, since like 1996 uh, for grid kids and, and other things. And, um, you know, even though we chose to, to school our kids, you know, I know there's a lot of parents that aren't able to do that. And, um, you know, it's there, there needs to be good schools for those kids. And, um, yeah, I just, I care about the kids and I know, I know a lot of them and, um, yeah, I just want to be on the school board to see if I can make a difference, but, you know, mainly, I guess I would like to see the best person get on the board in every position. And if that's not me, then I would get behind anybody else who I think is a better candidate. But uh, at this point, you know, I think I have a pretty good pulse, not just um, 
on uh, what's going on. You know, I taught, we talk to teachers, my wife and I, quite often and hear, hear some of the, the concerns. Um, and we talk to a lot of the constituents, people that, you know, taxpayers and their frustrations. So I just see there needs to be um, maybe a, a common ground that, the, that, that can bring those together. Um, you know, we've, we've even held events in our barn um, just to help be able to communicate, you know, some of the curriculums that are coming up, coming down the pike, things like the sex ed, and just talking about it among community members. And um, so that's, that's probably, probably not as much about myself, but uh, maybe a little more about why I think I could do okay. Okay. What do you believe is most important for the Prosser School District? Um, I think moving forward, just, you know, I think the, the values that we have in our community need to be guarded and um, there needs to be, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords flying around like diversity and inclusion and, and, you know, those need to be, those words don't need to be redefined, um, but there needs to be proper, you know, just a proper, um, um, communication where it's not confusing, but um, yeah, I I think um, Prosser and it needs and I think the teachers need more freedom to be able to uh, to teach and not be bogged down with a lot of the the requirements. With you know there are certain requirements they have to they have to maintain, but um, they just seem like they're barely treading water and they're just, it, we just keep throwing stuff on them. And um, yeah, I just, I guess I care about them too. Um, as a board member, what would you do if a community member or parent complained to you? Um, you know, as I said in my application, I think I would really try to listen first and then um, try to articulate back to them what the problem is. And I think that brings you know, it diffuses a situation in a lot of cases. Um, and then, you know, try to find out what the chain of command is and, and uh, follow that the best to the, the best we can and find the solutions and then follow up, make sure that they're, you know, that, that their question or their concern um, was satisfied. Okay. What is your current stance on the safety and security policy? Safety and security. Um, I believe you guys are still have the gap training. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And I was pretty, I knew John Ladinas pretty well. And I think, I believe he's the one that introduced that. Um, I'm a strong proponent of that, in, you know, for the purpose of keeping the kids safe. Um, I do believe if people are going to teachers or janitors are going to be carrying or, or, you know, yeah, carrying concealed that they need to be trained. And in an active shooter situation, there's a lot of other things you can do that are before that, that are preventative, um, that I believe are covered in the gap training. And I think, yeah, the safety is, is key because um, the world we live in now, you just don't know what's going to happen. And and we do not need to, our kids do not need to be um, victims of, of just bad, bad planning. In your opinion, what type of school should Prosser have? Um, I believe, you know, I believe they're, I think the education part of it, you know, I know Common Core has been a little bit of a struggle for a lot of teachers that, uh, you know, I, I, I want to see us get back more to the, to the, um, you know, the early, I guess, the more traditional reading, writing, and arithmetic, getting back to the basics and um, not getting diverted or getting sidetracked with uh, the political correct things of the day. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's, that's really important. And, and to have a, a good curriculum, you know, we, we have so many choices as a homeschooling parents um, online now, 
and um, there's many curriculums that are even even free. And we we uh, we have you know chosen the one that we thought was best for for our kids. Um, but I guess looking at the curriculum, um, not you know not being afraid to push back a little bit on the state mandates if it's not in the best interest of our kids. Currently, Patterson still owes Prosser money from the last bond to build the high school. What are your thoughts about this? You know what? Um, <laughs> I've listened to, you know, some of the other board meetings and, you know, until I actually was able to see what was going on, it's easy to say, you know, hey, I think I know the answer from the outside, but until you actually get, uh, you know, inside and see what's really going on, um, what's needed for both schools. Um, I think it's, you know, working together and, um, yeah, just like I said, it, I got a lot to learn and I'm, and I want to dig into that and learn as much as I can, you know, if I was to get chosen as, in this interim period. Okay. What are your beliefs in being part of a team and how would you work with other board members and the superintendent to come about positive resolutions? Well, I mean, I'm just, I would just be one vote. And, you know, as, as a board member, I believe your job is because it's an elected position, you know, you are, you are supposed to represent your constituents. So I would definitely try to have communication with, with the constituents, even an open forum maybe where we would, you know, uh, hear, hear from the parents. But um, I think, you know, just, just working together for solutions. And I think communication is a huge part of that. And uh, as, as some of the things we saw that happened with the sex ed curriculum, there was just a lot of miscommunication, thinking that there had been curriculum adapted when there really hadn't, hadn't even been, that hadn't even been done yet. So, you know, I think, uh, I think communicating and um, just, you know, being, a, being one of a team you know, you're only, you're, um, it's only one vote. So, um, but I, I do believe in team building and, um, you know, it's a little, and, and it's just like a business, you know, you have to do, sometimes you have to make hard choices and you have to do it because um, it's in the best interest of the business or in this case, it would be the best interest of the school. And, um, Sometimes those hard choices, it takes, it takes strong leadership to do that. And um, I think that's what, I think that's what Prosser needs is, is good, strong leadership. Okay. At times the role of a leader calls us to make unpopular decisions. What are your thoughts and beliefs about making decisions that are not always received well by the public and not for public disclosure? Well, um, <laughs> there again, I guess, I guess that's part of being a team, you know, it would, it would be, have to be all of us talking together and working through the problem. And, um, I mean, I would like to let my, the constituents know as much as possible, but, um, if it's something that's going to, you know, is, is going to damage the, the goal. I mean, I don't, I don't believe I would, I would withhold anything, but, uh, but to be a part of a team, I understand that too. You can't always just throw all your cards out and and um, right away people might misinterpret what's going on. So there has, again, you know, it just goes back to the communication again. And would this be, will this be difficult for you? Um, no, I don't believe it would be. Um, I think, uh, you know, the several businesses that I've built um, has enabled me to, to make the hard decisions and have hard conversations with people. Um, there comes a time where you just have to say no and um, just like being a parent. Um, but that's, that's hard sometimes, but uh, you know, the, the kids, the kids need leadership. Um, they need guidance. And um, I think they're looking for that. And uh, the school, the school district needs, needs leadership as well. So I hope, you know, I can bring some of that. And like I said, I have, I would have a lot to learn. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm a studier. And if I found, if I didn't know the answer to something, I'm gonna, 
look until I can find it. Okay. School boards operate best when they are honest, open-minded, solution-oriented, and committed to the children in, in the community. If you're appointed, do you believe that you can maintain these traits? Yes, I do. In the work that we do, it is often the case that others, whether it's board members or community members, may not share the same opinion that you hold. How would you work through a disagreement with an individual? Um, I just, you know, I guess listening to what they're saying and um, <clears throat> trying to find the solution, looking at, uh, you know, listening to their, their part, their side of it, because there's a lot of times that I don't have the facts. And when we do have the facts, it's a lot easier to see uh, the right path. But um, in that case, it may just be uh, simply not agreeing. And um, then it just comes down to the vote, I guess, with the board members. And, you know, and I'm not going to hold a grudge or, or anything. I just I want to see what's best. I want to do what's best for the kids, um, what's best for the teachers, the school district and the constituents. As a leader, there are many perspectives or filters that you will use to think about potential decisions. What is best for the students, risk and liability, legality, and tradition versus innovation? How would you work through a complex decision and the pros and cons in order to come to the best resolution? Um, sometimes, you know, like I said, hard decisions have to be made. I think uh, the way I would do it is is to try to get as many of the the people on board because there are going to be decisions moving forward that we just want to be able to allow into our our school district, and uh, sometimes that might that might go against um, what's you know what the state may be saying. But there's there's always creative ways I believe, and I think you guys have done. A, a really good job in, in some areas in that. Um, but uh, I think that that's probably the approach I would take, um, just trying to come up with the best solutions we can and realizing that there's only so much we can do. Um, you know, there is, there is parental responsibility and I like, and I would really like to see more of that. But I think just, you know, problem solving for, for the community and, and not being afraid of, of some pushback. I believe that's what we need. Um, if, we, if we don't you know, do the, what's best for the kids um, as far as curriculum and as far as, as providing a safe school, um, protecting our values, then what really is the point of having a public school? Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with the board? Um, yeah, I think, I think that, um, you know, I've, I've watched, I've been watching the, the, um, you know, just some of the, the other meetings online. And, um, I think it's really good. You guys have, you guys have really worked hard to, to, um, you know, just lay, lay a foundation to work together and try to come up with solutions. Um, I do think that sometimes the kids need more guidance. They need, they need to know uh, where, the, where the fences are, so to speak. And, and by that, I mean, you know, just having, having better boundaries for um, just what we allow to, to have happen in the schools. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who, who may not agree with well, I should say a lot of people on the other side that may not agree with our values, but I think we have to stick with them and be strong in that and do what's best for, uh, for our, our, our school, our kids. Okay. Uh, do you have any questions for us? Um, you know, I, I think, um, yeah, I guess, I, you know, I only knowing you, Jason, I don't really know many of the other board members. I, uh, I would, you know, like to know just, I guess, how, um, 
you know, I don't know if you guys didn't haven't decided yet on the sex ed curriculum, um, but that's that's been a big concern of mine. And I just I guess I would like to know, and this may not be the place to do it, but you know, I'm concerned about the stance there that uh, that we're we're you know maintaining the values of our of our um, community and um, and our school, and um, just yeah, I just want to know what you guys or where you're at in that process. I think at this point it's up. It's in a, a discussion item tonight, informational. Um, so the process is moving forward. Yeah, and I get asked a lot of questions from folks from the community. And uh, so I just, yeah, I mean, I, I try to, you know, I know you, Jason, but I don't know the rest of you guys. So it would be, it would be a pleasure, though, to be able to get to know you and, and work on with you guys on, on that level. And, you know, I think, um, Andy, when he asked me if I would be willing to do this, it would, seemed a little odd at the time because, you know, I'm a homeschool dad, um, but I was involved with the, the um, selection process of the, the superintendent and, um, you know, in the community, in a community like Prosser, you have to have a pretty good pulse on what's going on. And um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting process, but I believe you know, just, I, I believe that um, I care enough about the kids and about the school and about our community that I wanna see, I wanna see things turn out well. I wanna see them continue to go the right direction. And, um, but yeah, I just would thank you guys for the opportunity. Okay, well, thank you, Frank. Um, that you. concludes this. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know how this works. Does he call back in or? How does he wait around? Yeah, you guys can <laughs> go into executive yeah. session, deliberate okay. as a board, and we'll clear the room. Um, and then we can log back in, or they can silence and mute it, and Blake can, and um, we can exit. We just need to know how long we need. I have a procedural question. So is that a roll call vote or a motion to appoint a board member? Uh, I think that you would make a motion and then I would recommend a roll call afterwards because it is an appointment. So uh, somebody makes a motion, seconds it. Um, all in favor, aye or nay, and then do a roll call. And then after that, we're appointing tonight and they sitting and voting on yes. items tonight. Okay. Did everybody get in it? I guess an agenda was sent to them and could review it. Well, if not, they'll catch up fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, uh, we will recess to executive session pursuant to RCW 42.30.1101H with action to follow. Uh, this is to evaluate the qualifications of a candidate for appointment to elective office. However, any interview of the such candidate and final action appointing a candidate to elective office, elect elective office shall be in a meeting open to the public. Um, we will start with, we're going to take a five minute recess. Uh, so does that work five minutes? Five minutes. Uh, so we'll start executive session at 8.03. Uh, then it'll be, let's start with 15 minutes uh, to start, but you know, depending on how it goes, we'll, we could add time. So
the uh, regular meeting. Um, with that, we'll uh, appointment of a board member. Do I hear a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we appoint Anthony Dorsett to fill the open board position. I'll second that. It's moved and it's been moved and seconded to appoint Anthony Dorsett uh, as a appointed board member. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? The motion carries. Can we do a roll call? Oh, I guess we can do a roll call. Uh, Lisa? Aye. Jason is aye. Peggy? Aye. And Jeannie? Aye. All right. Well, welcome aboard, Anthony. And I just all those uh, that that uh, took part in this candidacy, I, I truly appreciate the fact that you were willing to step up to this. Um, so thank you. All right. Well, please stand. You have to stand. Uh, yeah. Raise your right hand. I state your name. I Anthony. Or Seth. Do you solemnly swear. Do you solemnly swear. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the state of Washington. And the state of Washington. And will faithfully perform the duties of school board director. Will faithfully perform the duties of school board director. Of the Prosser School District. Of the Prosser School District. Number 116. Number 116. In the county of Benton. In the county of Benton. State of Washington. State of Washington. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Excellent. Welcome aboard. Thank you. And then we'll send those in to. And hey, Blake. You can move over to. Uh, we have an iPad that he can get. He can get ready for. Him. Is there that one? Okay. And yes. There's an extra. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still I know, I don't know what it is. I hold it, uh, plastic bins. Plastic bins. Plastic bins in some Oh, that's why the black cloth is always get ugly. That's great. Need to stay here. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm show you after the meeting. Oh. Yeah. Anthony, welcome. Thank you. All right. Okay, so we'll we'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, next up will be. Uh, item B under informational health adoption. So um, my committee has completed their work. Um, we have approximately 12 lessons between third, fourth, fifth, middle school and high school that are new content standards. Um, those lessons will be available for review starting Friday at the curriculum office. If people would like, anybody would like to review those um, lessons, they can call the curriculum office. It's 509-786-2881 and call my assistant, Jaleesa, at 2602, and she'll schedule a time for those lessons to be reviewed. Anybody who reviews the lessons has to complete a review form. Um, and we'll be sending out an email because we also have ELA that's on. We'll send out an email to all the parents letting them know about both of those upcoming um, uh, review periods. We are going to run a longer review period for the health curriculum over a month. And then um, ELA will be a little bit shorter uh, timeline. We'll talk about that a little bit. What's the review form? It's a one-page form that um, people have to look at the lessons. They have to comment on, um, you know, comments on, you know, what they feel that they can mark that they feel is appropriate. There's a little some check boxes. Does it meet the standards? Is it appropriate for the students? Those kinds of things. It's just a one-page, um, pretty you know, general form so that we have written feedback from people versus just. Um, I have a question. Are we oh, going to wrap? I think I set the chair on the board. Okay. We all muted? Yep, we're all, we're all muted. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Um, 
Is there, I know on the, on the sheet, you didn't have who to contact on the a packet agenda, or did you change it? I, I just said that because I thought it was on there, but it's not on there. Okay. I think it's on the ELA one. Oh, it is. So that was just, be, but it, it'll be, the information will be in the email I put out. It also has to go in the paper. So it'll be in the paper next next week as okay. well for the next two weeks. Well, we and you said we'll send emails mm -hmm. to parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Any questions for Deanna on the? Um, oh, I did have one extra question. Um, is there a way we could get? We have to do the same thing, or can we get a complete? So. I would like you to review it at the curriculum office. Okay. Like everybody else. Please, um, I, because I like the lessons. I'd like. I I am going to have one extra binder, if 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 if, you, if it goes amongst the board, then I would need you to follow the same process. Fill out the form. It's actually three forms, one for elementary, one for middle school, and one for high school, um, and then return it. But I would need to be only to the board because I I don't want to have track of, I we we're keeping track of who's coming in and keeping track of all that, and I don't and if. So I would like to follow the same process that okay. everybody else okay. has to, but okay. if that's what you that's need, I will make it work for you. Okay. Is there a time limit for reviewing, like in your office? It, it, it will be at my, I will make, she'll make appointments for people to come in and review. I, I can't imagine it would take longer than maybe a half an hour to review the health. ELA could take substantially longer depending on what people want to look at. It is two different curriculums for the middle school and the high school. Um, and a lot of that, that access, a lot of it is online. We don't have paper materials for a lot of it. So it's a little more challenging. Um, but there are so are also two videos with the elementary that like we'll have a device so people can look at the videos. For health um, or the for health. They're okay. the yeah, it's like the social media lesson, the, the digital okay. for kids, you know, making good choices online okay. videos. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I had a comment. I was able to attend two of the meetings, and I just got to say, you and all the health teachers did an amazing job putting everything together. It was really organized. It's great. Sometimes it went a little long, but it was, uh, it was really good. So thank you. You're getting used to those meetings go a little long yeah, sometimes, right? I'm getting used to it right now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Noah. Okay. Um, with that, we'll move to item C, 6 through 12, English language arts adoption. So um, our middle school folks were able to make a decision. Uh, it's been really challenging. Um, we do have ESSER funding for this that we are going to spend, and we need to spend that by June. By August 31st. It has to be fully spent by August. So we are going to, we're, so we wanted to make sure that that they could have the time to make a good decision, but we would be able to use that funding because we want to take advantage of that opportunity. Okay. The high school um, and middle school teachers, parents, um, administrators, myself, have been meeting for six or seven months, um, going through curriculums that meet the state standards, um, listening to presentations from the, uh, the, the companies, looking at the materials ourselves. Um, we've been a ton of time contacting other districts that have uh, these curriculums and the others that we looked at in um, in their schools and got feedback from, from that way as well. And at this time, the high school would like to adopt the curriculum called My Perspectives from Savas Learning. And the middle school has chosen American Reading Company, which is the same curriculum that we have at K-5 right now. Um, I think it's gonna, there's going to be some challenges there because of time and, and collaboration and stuff, but because of the strength of the curriculum, they felt that was that was important. So those are the two recommendations. So similar to the health health lessons, they, those become for open review first, which um, I can give you guys the online access codes to those so you can see any of that online. It's going to be hard because they're complex, but um, I can share that with you if you want to review them that way. We do have some of the hard materials that will be at the office that you can look at it as well. Um, and and that, but that review period is a little shorter, um, just out of necessity of getting things ordered. So teachers have materials in their hands to do planning this summer um, and getting our professional development lined up for next year. 
So when there's the timeline, we can look at them. Um, it's also, we'll, we, we will have that open. We'll have them there on Friday as well, but it's from Monday, May 15th to Friday, June 2nd. But again, I can give you guys the online access so you can look at them from home if you want to. Okay. So you'll... Anybody uh, can do that. The problem is I do really need the form still completed. So okay. if I send you that access, I'm going to send you the form so you can do those. Questions. You'll email us those. I'm uh, happy to do that if okay. that's what you'd like me to do. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions concerning mm -mm. ELA? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Last but not least, the uh, 2324 proposed calendar. Uh, so I worked with our teachers union um, to final, get a finalized calendar for next year. There was a proposed calendar that was. Um, available but this is the student calendar for 23 um, we also worked this summer to do a proposed calendar for next year uh, this one came like the finalization is late um, today when we met we talked about let's let's finalize this like maybe late winter when we get you know next year's maybe late winter instead of spring yeah okay. yes are we going to do a rolling start for kindergarten? We always do that. Um, and also for TK and for ECAP preschool too. Okay. Yeah. It helps the schools and the buses <laughs> and probably parents. And the parents. parents of yeah. Ones. Yes. <laughs> Any questions on the calendar? Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. okay, I don't have a hard copy of that sheet, do we? No, the addressing the board. Oh, I do? Oh, okay. Easier to read this way. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go into public comment. Um, addressing the board, you may present a concern to the board during the time reserved for hearing public comment. If this is the case, we ask that you, prior to the start of the meeting, sign in, noting the topic you intend to address to the board. Come to the microphone and state your name. Do not reflect adversely on the political or economic view, ethnic background, character, or motives of any individual. Do keep your comments concise, not emotional and brief. The board is interested in hearing your concerns and in, in your compliments too. Um, for the sake, I oh, I stole it from you. Would you <laughs> here, will you sign this real quick? And um, and because of the sake of of time, um, and the, the the amount of the and the agenda, we're going to do two minutes for a total of twenty. You don't have to say that much. Okay, thank you. Okay. So with that. Um, I think it's Stacy Hillman. Hillman. Sorry. Do I need to state my name and spell it? Yes, please. My name is Stacy S T A C E E Hillman H E I L M A N. My name is Stacy Heilman. I am a paraprofessional at Heights Elementary and the PSC president of our chapter. I represent all classified transportation, including mechanics, food service, paraeducator group, which includes office assistants, SLPA assistants, health room assistants, technology, special services, and custodians, grounds, and maintenance. I've worked for this school district for 23 years. I've seen a lot of changes in this district with teachers, classified principals, and superintendents coming and going. I'm here to express concern for our classified. We've watched the school board approve outrageous amounts of raises for the admin over the years, and yet we still do not have a livable wage. For example, my position as a paraeducator, a subs wage in my position is at the first step on schedule A, $18.94 an hour. My wage at 20 years is $20.43. The margin between the two should be larger. During the time I have been actively involved in my union, I've realized everything is up for negotiation. For instance, the state has allocated a 3.7% IPD COLA or cost of living. This should be a given. 
Inflation is at its worst and we hardly keep up with groceries, the cost of gas, housing costs, et cetera. I would ask the school board and the district to show in good faith, be compassionate and thoughtful in your decisions and give all classified a living wage. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to say, is it Jeannie? Jeannie, Jeannie Borden? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Jeannie Borden, J-E-A-N-N-E. -N -E. My last name is Borden, B-O-R-D-E-F. Um, I, I wrote a letter and I, I wrote it to our board and I'll just go ahead and read it, okay? Dear Prosser School Board members, I would like to thank each one of you for your service for our school district. My name is Jeannie Borden and I am a classified paraprofessional for Prosser School District. My job title is a health room assistant and I have a current CPR, first aid, AED card and I'm a certified nurse's assistant. <clears throat> I have been employed by our school district since 1993 and I am proud to say it has been a wonderful 30 years. The, through the span of my career working for Prosser School District, I have worked with children ranging, ranging from preschool to 12th grade. I have been given the wonderful opportunity to work in all five of our schools in our district and have worked under seven registered nurses. I feel I have been blessed to have had this opportunity through the years of my employment. Some people might ask themselves, what does a health room assistant do in a school setting. Well, I'm pleased that I have been given the opportunity to tell you board members and our community a little bit about my position here for the Prosser School District. I worked under our school nurse's license for many years, and this has given me the training and opportunity to perform some of the procedures assigned to me, which include administering medications such as inhalers, ADHD, over-the-counter, anti-anxiety, anti-seizure, life-threatening emergency medications, and more. There are times when we get a student that might need to be too fed or needs assistance with intermittent catheterization, and I have the training to perform these assignments under our school nurses. One might ask, why do I have to perform these procedures when we have registered nurses in our schools? Well, we have five buildings in our district serving 2,400 students, which makes it impossible for two nurses to be at all buildings every day. I am pr proud to say that our health service team with the guidance of our school nurses make that happen. I have the training to administer first aid, follow healthcare plans involving students with serious health conditions, including asthma, diabetes, concussions, heart conditions, organ transplants, epilepsy, hemophilia, spina bifida, and more. In addition to running our school, office, our school health offices, I help conduct vision and hearing screening, record results, follow up with parents regarding their children's referrals, injuries on and off campus, accident reports, field trips, and whatever health concerns arise in a school day that requires communication between myself, our school nurses, and parents to resolve matters in hand. When a child enters the health room at school, I am there for this child. Every student in our school district is important and I will take care of each and every child with the best of my ability because this student is someone else's child. I take my job very seriously. My job is to help keep our students safe and comfortable so they can be successful in the classroom. I am just one of the many, par many paraprofessionals in our school district. We are the eyes and the ears in our schools for our staff, students, and our parents. Thank you. Uh, Monica. Uh, Monica Niemeyer, M-O-N-I-C-A. Niemeyer, N-I-E-M-E-Y-E-R. And so when, I, when we last spoke, when I came to the board, um, 
I was going to give you guys a report back because Matt had said that he'd replied back to my public records requests. And he said he had. Well, a third he had. He was a third right. I actually had three public records requests. He replied back to one. So there are still two more outstanding. And if that could please be looked at, I would appreciate that. In regards to the one that he replied back to, he did he did clarify on what was needed and that he, um, because it was information, it was outside of the scope of the Public Records Act. So to make sure I'm asking all the correct questions and I'm doing all the right things, I'm using the resources given to us. And I've reached out to the Assistant Attorney General's Office on open government and public records, giving him that information, telling him what I've actually wanted and how I should reward it. So um, I do have two public records to submit today. One of them is actually on me. There you go, dear. Yeah, or just pass it down to me. I, yes, I said dear, sorry. And then the other one is um, at the last board meeting, when we were talking about candidates. Peggy looked down and said that she had a list of candidates, but it was never spoken about. And I'm not sure if it's, I hope it's going to be spoken about, but I would still like the records of that meeting from the board. It is public record. It was stated there and everyone saw that she was looking at it. If I'm correct, let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's public record. Um, the other thing is I'm, I'm requesting, I have some questions. I'm requesting review on the memorandum of understanding that um, Matt is submitting for um, the assistant for, for Deanna and for Rick. Um, I'm, I have a little bit of questions. When you look at the memorandum of understanding, it has a different school year. It has this current school year, but then it states that it starts July 1st of 2023. If you guys could please look at that and review that, that would be great. Um, and then I'm also just gonna add, um, the cost of living. I, I guess I don't understand how an individual that is higher up is allowed to have a automatically tied on to a group's cost of living. If I'm understanding it right, it's tied on to the principals. Well, they're higher up. I mean, come on, in the real world, if you want a raise, you ask for a raise. I guess I don't understand how those two individuals, that those two positions, I should say, can tie on to the principals and automatically get that. They should work at it just as these lovely women do and just as all the other staff do. They all should work at it. Um, Your time is up. Okay. I was just kind of going off what she had. So well, I understand that. Uh, no, no, it's okay. Yeah. If you would like to submit any more comments or questions to our email, feel free to do so. No, no, not at all. And I do want to thank you guys for um, making the interviews public because the way executive session has been going, I didn't think it was going to be. So I'm hoping this is a good step in the right direction. I do thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, Angela Duarte. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Angela Duarte, A-N-G-E-L-E-S-D-U-A-R-T-E. -E -E. um, first of all, I want to thank you, everyone, for and the board for your hard work. I know it's hard to please everyone, part of a diverse community, and I'm a uh, little part maybe, but I'm very pleased when I saw Mr. Um, Alice and some of you at our meetings in the back. I came from the migrant program. I'm naming it because I learned everything I, I know about the school board and school. I had trouble and I received help through migrants. And through that, I went to the PAC and then I joined the SAC, State Advisory Committee, and I had the opportunity to know um, our superintendent of the state. And when I was here there, they told me, they trained me to how to talk to you and good results for our community. I'm sad that we are not very involved, but I would like to ask you to make it more uh, accessible. Um, my English sometimes fails me, I'm sorry. But um, having it in Spanish, I don't know how they did it. Uh, I invited some of you, and Ms. Eliza attended that meeting for the SAC, and uh, they have these things that um, they we speak Spanish, so it was in Spanish, and she could read it. So perhaps we can do some like that on these kind of meetings. Um, also, I want to thank you for the opportunity to have participated on Mr. Ellis um, when he was going to be superintendent. 
I hope in this new process that this leaving us, and I'm sorry to see you go, because um, people, my people, and everyone in the school system needs to know who the board is. And uh, when I heard, oh, the school board, you know, you have to talk there. Oh, what? I I don't know them. So I could appreciate that you do something like that for the whole community, especially migrant, because they really need to know you. They really need to know that there are a lot of resources for them in this system. And I know you hear us, so please consider to include us in that. Thank you. Thank you, Angela. And thank you again for replying on my email. Thank you. And with that, do we have anybody on Zoom? Okay. Thank you. All right, student reports, right? Oh, yep. And, um, I don't have a lot to report on. Uh, Becca did go to Seattle today to the Mariners game um, and to learn about uh, professional careers in pro sports. Um, so that was good. Mariners lost, so that was pretty not good. But uh, from what I heard, it was good. So, uh, yeah, it's about all that I have. Uh, you know, not been a really busy week. So. Thank you, Noah. I'll move on to consent items. I'll make a motion. We approve the consent items as revised. I'd like to discuss item A, so if we could remove that off consent and put it as an action item. Jeannie, would you like to amend your motion? And that was, um, I'll make a motion to approve the consent items um, and to revise with uh, A being moved to action items. I'll second it. Got to get to the bottom. That will go to action item. So certificated personnel will go to action item H would be I. So it's been moved and seconded to um, approve consent items B and C, moving A to action item I. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, same sign, motion carries. I abstain from voting because I don't review any of those. Yeah. Yes, you may. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's see. Action item A is out of state travel request for archery. I know, um, Wendy and Linda caught me before we went into the executive session after the um, interviews. Um, and so they don't think they're here, and I don't, not 100% sure. They're online, but any questions for? Um, I'm not sure where you're at. Am I on the wrong thing? I'll just change travel. Oh, okay. Under It'd be page 94. And oh. they're only asking for permission to travel out of state and coverage for the sub. So no money at this time. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, they didn't talk to me about it beforehand. So okay, I yeah, no, yeah. Maybe, yeah, I think. Yeah. I do you think they want to be a part of the meeting next week to discuss more of this uh, in a work session? But I think it's just out of state travel and, sure. and subs at this point. Okay. I'm pretty impressed that we have somebody going to international. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I would make a motion to approve the out of state travel request for archery. I'll second that. Been moved and second to approve out of state travel requests for archery. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Right. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Are you guys able to hear me? Who's that? This is Todd Dormeyer, father of Chelsea Dormeyer. Oh, <laughs> yes, please speak. All right, I'm at work. Uh, hold on, let me get this turned around here. Okay. 
So I'm at work, so I apologize. I just randomly came back in, saw you guys were done with everything else this morning, or <laughs> this morning, uh, earlier in your meeting. So I do believe that um, we are looking for help as far as monetarily wise. Um, Chelsea did do well enough to move on to Worlds. We've been holding off uh, as family and whatnot to move forward with purchasing airfare and whatnot. I'm not sure on the uh, teacher side of things, but we have, I know, registered her, but that's a very minimal amount. Um, so we're still kind of waiting for board's approval um, as far as moving forward to, to purchase plane tickets and whatnot. So just as a caveat to that, and we can follow up later, but just so that you guys were, were kind of pending getting that stuff. And as the further we go into this, uh, obviously costs are going to go up and then obviously lodging is going to become minimal. So just as a heads up on that as well. Well, I think it's been approved to for the out of state travel. Um, and then as far as I know, Wendy and and Linda could give us a budget, have a budget discussion on on what's needed and what can be fundraised, et cetera. Perfect. Appreciate that at, ne at next meeting. So perfect. Thank you guys for all your support in this. Uh, it means a lot to us, but it also means, of course, an exponential amount to Chelsea and her endeavors in this. Uh, it's been quite amazing to be able to watch her do something that she has competed for the first time and grow. And I uh, don't want to let her down on my behalf, but I know you guys don't want to let her down either. So I appreciate that very much. Well, thank you. We're proud of her. So thank you. keep it up. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving to item. B would be senior luncheon uh, vendor approvals. And that is Mackenzie. Local I'm local. here. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so we are hoping to do kind of basically the same thing that uh, the group did last year. Um, the Princess Theater has been really good to us and has um, offered us, again, their green room and theater to use for the senior luncheon, which is what we do the day before graduation. Um, and so they're, they're willing to rent us that facility. And then last year they used ready and out, um, tacos and everybody raved about the food. And so we thought, you know what, we might as well try that again this year. So we're hoping for approval for both, um, the princess theater and for ready and out. Yeah. Did this come out of funds the senior class has raised? Yes, yes. And we are sitting at a really happy, good amount um, as far as our budget goes. Mm -hmm. We're at about $5,000 um, right now. And so we do need to spend it. We need to spend it on something before they um, graduate because then we, you know, then we should take our funds down to zero. So yeah, we're at a healthy spot. Well, I make a motion then to approve the um, senior luncheon vendor um, as uh, presented. I'll second. So moved and seconded to approve um, the senior class luncheon as presented. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, You're McKenzie. Welcome. All right. Moving on to vouchers and payroll. We have any questions, comments, or I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. We approve vouchers and payroll as presented. I'll second it. I did have a couple questions, and I know a lot of them got answered. Um, uh, once I find it, no, I don't even know where they are. Well, there it is. Um, when we look at vouchers and I think specifically, and, and Amy clarified it really well. So we're paying for when it comes to Oh my gosh, there it is. Um, facilities, we pay all that out of levy funds for ASV activities, correct? 
or sport activities, I guess. Um, I could not confidently say it's only out of levy funds. That would be out of more of our general operational okay. budget. Um, stuff like paying for the golf course, then yes, that would be, I would assume that's part of the levy funds. Um, okay. That's where my knowledge is lacking. And as far as like the original plan for levy dollars, um, but it is our job to provide the facilities. We can't require the sports to pay for their own facilities. So if we don't have adequate facilities, but we are allowing the sports to participate. We also have to make sure they have those. Okay. No, it the, makes sense. So that swim, so we pay for the pools, like rental of the pools. We pay for the, um, the golf course. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is that amount for the season? At Black Rock? It was. Okay. Any other questions? Nope. That's mm -hmm. been moved and seconded to approve uh, vouchers and payroll. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right. Stepping stones, speech and language pathologist. I think this is coming back from our previous meeting. Um, hi, this is Cindy Dean. Can you hear me? Yes, yep. yes we can. Hey, um, I understand that there's some questions surrounding um, stepping stones. So we hired a um, Courtney to come back to Heights to do the speech. We've been using Michelle Lowry has a contractor who's more expensive than stepping stones. So what we are doing is moving stepping stones from heights over to serve the high school and the middle school, thus reducing the time that we would need Michelle Lowry. She'll only be providing services out at Whitstrand and also um, overseeing our people who are working on their C. She's the only speech therapist that we have that's qualified to help those, um, our individuals who are in that process finish that up. Michelle is actually wanting to phase out of the school district. And this is a, a money saving move for us. Courtney doesn't start until next year, is that right? Right, and, and this doesn't, this contract doesn't start till next year with stepping stones. We have a contract with them this year. The, the one that's on the board packet is for the following year. I think there might've been a mistake on the attachment flag. It's so long there. It says it begins 3-30-2023. So that was, that was two months ago. That was an error. It but doesn't, be, it begins next year. Um, I think the one that was put on the original packet um, was the one that they sent us as a um, proposal, but it's it begins next year. She's contracted through this year already. Right, but the agreement that's in the packet, Sydney, says it begins on March 30th. So can we table this again and bring it back with the actual agreement you want the board to approve? Yes, I can. And so just to follow up, who's doing speech at KRB right now? Cameron Holt. And at Heights, that's remote right now, is that right? Right, that is Stepping Stones. And at the middle school and high school, that's Michelle Lowry at this time? Yes. And at Woodstrand, it's Michelle Lowry? Yes. And then next year, it will be Cameron at... Riverview? Yes. Courtney at Heights? Yes. Whitstrand? No, um, can't, um, Michelle will be at Whitstrand. Okay, so we'll still have Michelle in some capacity and then stepping stones ideally at the middle school and high school. Correct. All right, thank you. So I, I would ask that we table this again so we have the actual agreement that needs to be approved. I make a motion to sure, I make I'll make a motion okay. to the table for that accurate contract to be provided. Do you have a second? I'll second. 
been moved and second just uh, table stepping stone speech and language contract uh, so we can get an updated uh, revised contract for the upcoming year. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks for staying on, Cindy. You're welcome. Thank you for the discussion. Uh, next up is a Prosser Coaches Association Agreement. So this is the first of its kind. Uh, Prosser Athletic Coaches have a newly formed union. Um, and this is a product of mediation and coming to an agreement with the Prosser Coaches Association. Um, who drafted the agreement? Um, so Herc had a lawyer by the name of Sean Leonard. Uh, Sean Mumford was involved. And of course, the Coaches Association, who the president is Kyler Bach Hoffner. So Sean Mumford had to do this for the district? Yep. Okay. Any questions concerning the coaches uh, agreement? I have one. Um, you know, looking at this contract, and Amy helped give me some of these numbers, but it looks like if everything stays status quo from this year to next year, this is going to be an increase of $107,000. Base salary. That's right. Now, I don't. I'm not saying that this isn't warranted or needed, but as we keep work, if as we keep increasing our costs, um, we're going to have to find another solution, right? Because a lot of this comes. Now, don't quote me. It, it's a hundred percent levy. It's hundred percent levy. Levy, I know that. Um, Athletics. <laughs> so, you know, it, like I said, I'm not saying that it's not deserving, but I don't know how sustainable this is long term. Um, so I would hope that in the future, our coaches and, and those people would, would start, if we could be more active in fundraising, um, and being able to kind of supplement some of this, cause it's only going to exponentially grow over time. Mm -hmm. So. And, and going into next year, that is the only option because the levy rate was already established. It's already been approved for the next year what that levy rate is. So mm -hmm. we are going to have to make some changes for the 23-24 cycle. We can ask for more at the next levy to um to you know consider that, or we have to look at our ratio model um for staffing so that those who are coaching do get adequately compensated, but we might not be able to have as many. That's just where we are. Um we don't have the extra money to to repurpose. We can't take from basic ed. It's not allowed. So it is, there's an impact there. Yeah. Athletics 100% funded out of levy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right now we also use, le use levy dollars for like the, um, the officials for um, the travel, some other things that can be fundraised on the ASB side. So we will have to shift some of those costs back to ASB. The alternative would be down the road starting to charge kids to play sports to offset it, which I really hate to do. Mm -hmm. I know the bigger schools do that, but and with House Bill 1660, we have to waive um, those fees for anyone who does qualify for low income. That's right. So that's not that might not be sustainable for our district as well. Um, right. so I really think that we'll have to hit fundraising harder. Mm -hmm. Um I did meet with the coaches, I met with some of our ASB. And um, today, so we're having those conversations, mm -hmm. and I don't want to derail us too much, but mm -hmm. I do want to keep those conversations open about maybe having bigger goals for our philanthropy, bigger sustainable goals, maybe endowments or naming facilities or things that we I think need to think big to help us sustain our athletic programs. Deanna, is there, or maybe Amy, you can help, or anybody jump in. Is there any potential grant funding that can be leveraged to help supplement? I'm not saying just this contract, but just in general. 
Transfer, um, transfer, all kinds of things. It's just not something you can live by. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it works for the sometimes for the short term, but it's. I mean, a lot of times, like you know, we have you know our our kind of our compliance grants. That you know, we <clears> spending <throat> year to year. That's different than a competitive grant. So, I mean, it really just it depends. You can get something that might help you out in one year, but <clears throat> could be totally gone the next year. That's so it's pretty. You have to come up with a plan where your system can sustain it, and then maybe the grants become some of the you know gravy. Like you know, we've had people do legends grants for uniforms or mm -hmm. for different mm -hmm. things like that. But it's a challenge. As it is, it is a big expense, but it's a big part of you know. There's a lot of kids that that's a big part of their lives. So. Mm -hmm. For sure. But it's everything. It's not. I mean, you're talking about ASB. It's everything is the activities it's, it's everything mm -hmm. it's extracurricular do we know what the increase in pay for the coaches where it puts them among salaries and payment within the league like is it comparable with other coaches are we at the top or are we at the middle or are we at the bottom uh somewhere at the the middle top um so it is competitive um and we bar you know of course um you know this process part of the negotiations they come in high you come in low and you meet somewhere in the middle the benefit of it was i think that this specific contract is a three-year deal with no openers um so there isn't a return um to the table in that so where do you so. where did the salary start going in top middle bottom uh they shifted them around uh, head coaches, I think, got the most money out of it. Um, and then middle school assistants got the least amount of money out of it. And maybe I worded my question poorly. Compared to the other coaches in, other, in the league, when we went in, were we at the top negotiate? Coming in with the top salary, a bottom salary, a middle salary? Yeah, where we started was uh, probably lower, um, lower half. Uh, it was below the middle line. I know that. And, and that was part of the... That's part of the concern there is that um, for what people consider high performing athletic teams, we really weren't compensating coaches well. So, any other questions? Yeah, the same concerns you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the uh, roster coaches association agreement as presented. Do we have a second? So what happens if it's not approved, Matt? Uh, yeah, basically, I guess there is Number one, um, you would return. Uh, you would look at probably a ULP in breaching bargaining in good faith, um, unfair labor practice. Um, and then you go back to the table. So I'll, I second Director Duckworth's motion. It's been moved and seconded to approve the Prosser Coaches Association agreement. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, Prosser Association of Educational Off Office Professionals, WEA, -E NEA agreement. And this is for the secretaries. So the building secretaries. Uh, last year, we kind of had some protracted negotiation. What we decided on was a one-year deal and to return to the table immediately. And so we did that. We struck um, a multi-year deal with them. Uh, we feel that it's fair and reasonable and that they're deserving um, of, of a salary increase. Um, what we did there was usually what's negotiated is um, the proposal is uh, IPD or COLA or some percent that usually um, the union constructs. So we worked in some new language there that was 
um, IPD or COLA plus a another um, percentage on top of that. And what budget does this come from? Uh, general. And what portion of it is paid by the state versus the community? So these positions have a um, like a base amount funded from the state. And so anything over that, either it's one less position funding it or um, we tap into levy. So depending on where they fall on the, so there's a salary schedule and they all fall kind of in the same area or closer. Yeah, depending on years of experience, but it's one salary schedule. Um, so the one percent is not funded by the state. So that's either one less position based on FTE or, you know, to make up the difference or, um, like I said, levy. The one percent, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, excuse me. And um, so, like, the IPD is the percent funded from the state baseline. So, say it's 57,000, then they're going to fund the three, the 3.7 percent on that base amount. So, if somebody's paid below that, then it gives us a little bit extra wiggle room to, to pay. And if they're above that, then that's when we have to come up with additional resources to pay that difference. And then the one percent is on their salary, not on the IPD that's funded by the state. Does that help clarify it? It does. And when does it go into effect? Their, this contract? Yeah. This is backdated to September 1. Right. Is because this year, Matt, or this, that we're in? Or this next year's year? going forward, yeah, because it was a one year. When we agreed last year, it was for that past year. And then it was like, well, you agreed in the summer, so immediately returned to the table. So it'd be September 1st, so any increase would be retro back to September 1st. So. Mm -hmm. I will make a motion that we approve Crosser Association of Educational Office Professionals, WEA, NEA agreement. Oh, I'll second. Been moved and seconded to approve the Prosser Association of Educational Office mm -hmm. Professionals. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. All right, moving on. This is a uh, second reading of policy and procedure 3116 student in foster care. So this is second and final, if I'm not mistaken, right? The third time, I think you've seen it. I don't think it's changed. I move to approve the policy and procedure 3116 students in foster care. I'll second. I'll second, Jason. It's been moved and seconded to uh, approve the final reading of policy and procedure 3116. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those same sign, motion carries. Okay, uh, let's see. The last one is a memorandum of understanding between the district assistant superintendent and CTE director. Yeah, so this is basically an early negotiation proposal. So as I phase out and the new leader phases in, there are Still, contracts that have to be bargained and negotiated. Um, executive assistant, which is a district office staff, exempt employees, which um, Kim Bolt, Selena, and Sonia Rivera, um, PSE, you heard from them tonight. Uh, teachers have openers, and then principals uh, have some openers too. And so um, somebody uh, should engage in that work. This was hopefully to guarantee a rate so there's no piggybacking but there's no conflict of interest there uh rick Fall and deanna flores both have uh experience in negotiating part of that process would include amy um as well and uh running running numbers and sitting in on that process um, as part of the team and so this is so i can hand off that work um in negotiating and um we can start the transition and so whoever the new superintendent, be it an interim or be it a full-time superintendent, is not bombarded with 
there's seven agreements that need to be negotiated all at once and you don't really have time to review the budget. Um, so there is a conflict in terms. It says it goes from 2022 to 2023, and then it says the parties agree the following terms are effective July 1st, 2023. So should it be 2023 to 2024? 2023 to 2020, so next year, yeah. So that, that would need to be updated. And who drafted it? Um, this was a kind of a process that Deanna, Rick, and I worked together on. Um, and so it's a proposal. Uh, their contract would stay the same, but this memorandum would alter their contracts. So I would I would suggest we have the attorney for the school district look at it. It doesn't reference their contract. We don't know what it's a memorandum to. We don't know what it attaches to. It says the parties. It doesn't say who the parties are. Uh, I think it needs to have, and clearly the dates need to be correct as well. Okay. And it should be dated what day you're signing it. Sure. We'll bring it back. Okay. And we have to bring that. Uh, do we want a motion to table till the next meeting? Sure. I move, I move that we table the memorandum of understanding between the district assistant superintendent and the CTE director. Okay, I'll second. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded to table the MOU between the district and assistant superintendent and CD, CTE director to clarify some language. Uh, we'll move that to the last meeting of the month. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now we're going to go back to this would be action item I. Um, this would be certificated personnel revised. And I had questions regarding the, um, fulfilling these positions for next year. So I see that Ms. Alex from the open door position at Heights is resigning. Are we filling the open door position? I would find out, yes. Okay. And has it already been posted? No, because okay. we're talking about possibly some reconfiguration. The, the service model is supposed to change to be push in versus pull out. Um, so a, a little bit different. We do have also some part time positions and we might do some reconfiguring. So we haven't really had any opportunity to do this yet. We just had some preliminary conversations. Are all other openings within the district posted? Uh, PE, I know we had several PE teachers at the high school leave. Is there, need everything's for... posted at least as anticipated. Okay. Um, not, some of these are not posted yet. They're too recent. Okay. But... Choir and guitar teacher posted. posted. Fifth grade teacher at height. Fifth grade teacher at height. Um, so they actually don't need a fifth grade teacher. Okay. Um, I did see with Jody, and so with the numbers, um, she'll be able to. She has the right staffing for fifth grade. So I know that fourth grade we had to have another teacher because right. of where that landed, but she already had the right number of fifth grade teachers, so she's good there. I just met with her yesterday, I think, maybe two days ago, but we just met this week, and so she is confident in her fifth grade teaching. Yeah. I move that we approve the certificated employee. Your second. No, second. It's been moved and seconded to approve uh, certificated personnel revised. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, now we're on to discussion item A e signature recommendations. And I believe that's Amy. Nope, Sean. That was Sean. I know she was here earlier. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have one question. I know she's going to present this information. Um, is that do we not want to approve the board policy on use the use of EE signatures before we select one? Or I know I wasn't able to be here on that meeting. Just call in. Sorry, Sean. I was just asking for questions. I'm just here to answer questions if you have any. Well, I think that's we, a really good point. Do we have a hesitation? Because no matter what platform we use, if we don't have a policy in place, we can't use anything. 
um, but the policy wouldn't restrict it to a certain platform. Um, so before, like, we can bring that back and get that approved just how we have the policy in place, and um, unless there's hesitation there, unless you want to know exactly what platform or multiple platforms we could use. And I apologize, I wish I just wasn't here that maybe it didn't catch the conversation. I can't remember, Mike. I had a question on Blue Ink. Um, and that that will have a cost associated, correct? I do, and I have all the costs. I just didn't include them. Um, I didn't make a copy of this, but you're more than happy to look at it. <laughs> and it's really just chicken scratch. Um, when the district office reached out to see if I would vet some companies, the first thing I did was reach out to other tech directors from neighboring school districts to see what other schools did. And you can see in my makeshift spreadsheet there, I the schools that responded to my email. Um, the schools spoke favorably of the Blue Ink. They were not necessarily the cheapest. Um, Adobe Sign is who came in a little cheaper than Blue Ink, I wanna say, um, but the school districts as a whole uh, favored Blue Ink over the others. Some of them are super expensive. DocuSign is super expensive, um, but they're also kind of the industry leader. So we've kind of had a monopoly on the market for a long time. Um, they were definitely the most expensive. When it comes to like a paper trail, like if you're looking for a, for a legal piece to all of it, they're all super comparable. Uh, Adobe Sign and Blue Ink were, um, when I, I, I met with all of them or did a, a super quick webinar with all of them. Uh, they're all super comparable when it comes to the actual paper trail uh, for legal reasons. Uh, the other thing I compared was a dashboard of sorts. So how are we going to track our documents? How are we going to keep them secure? Are they secure? How long do we have access to them? What happens if we leave them? If we sign with one of these companies and next year we decide to move on to a different company, what happens to our documents uh, that we have on their server space? Uh, all of those pieces and questions were answered by all of them. Uh, and then I just kind of sorted them based on that criteria. No, I, um, I think it's probably something to continue to look look towards. Um, but yeah, we do need a policy and a procedure probably before we pick a an outlet. Are you, go ahead. I was going to say, are you comfortable with us bringing that policy back after the next meeting? Uh, do you, was there additional information you wanted on it? I use the information. I would like to know. What transactions do we plan to use it for? Mostly within the district, parent signatures for business transactions. But I think that would depend on what we would want to choose. I feel so like if it's for getting student and parent signatures and mostly within the district, I think Adobe would satisfy that. If we talk about the legal paper trail, trail um, that I would think if we're doing a lot of transactions at that level, we would need something that paper trail, but we may not necessarily need that. So I'd like to know what use primarily will it be for? Um, part, so when I first was like, hey, we should do this, it was just to start that conversation so that it's an option. It's an option for when we need something or like, can this process be fast done, be, be done faster? Can it be sent to the board via email, you know, or, you know, a link to, to get the signatures or just inner, inner um, district. So like a travel claim. Okay. Do we really need them to handwrite, you know, their signature or can we do it electronically? So it was just opening the door, but I'd be happy to take your direction. If you want it to be limited to ju just these first few steps and then we have to reevaluate the policy if we want to extend that, I'm more than happy to go that direction. Um, but it's just, I know that RCW, there's one that says you like you can't use electronic signatures with that of our policy. So I wanted to start there, get something in place so that as we find that the function works better and it's low risk and we can go forward with it, then at least we can do that. But I mean, Sean brought up some great points. She's looked into some really great options for us um, and we'd have to roll that out to see when is it cost effective? When is it not worth the money? And, you know, there's there's all of those questions. That's an interesting conversation too, because it, it it's a super broad conversation uh, that I got into with some of the districts. So most school districts use it for employment contracts, uh, onboarding documentation, tax documentations. Uh, it's almost all employment-based, uh, not necessarily parent-student signature-based, <clears throat> although you could use it for that. It's mostly centered around employment. 
<clears throat> some companies, not that you guys would ever care. I didn't know this existed though. Some companies uh, base their cost on a per signature and some base it on a per packet. So that's a consideration too, if we're going to use it for an employment onboarding packet. So you've got all your tax documents and your contracts and your everything you've got dealing with employment. Uh, some companies base it on a folder, so to speak. That was kind of, that was a term that we discussed. Whereas some companies base it on individual documents. Uh, that's becoming an industry standard, uh, going to that folder scenario, but it hasn't always been like that. Uh, but when it comes to who, who we're requiring to sign these documents, the documents look different. Well, I appreciate you doing all the legwork for it. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, my chicken shrimp. <laughs> Any comments, direction? Do you have kind of what you need, or I don't know what we need. I, I would, I would probably lean on on you guys to come up with the where you see it streamlining processes, and then we can evaluate it at that point. That, that's my opinion. So. If we were to bring a, would you prefer if we bring back a policy that is pretty limited? Would that make you feel like more comfortable approving that just so we can get that going, test out? a few options or um i don't know if wasa has a model policy on sean's listed, listed several schools that had muckle teo and richland so maybe okay. was it I think the, the one that was on the last meeting or the last thing that was posted was a wasa oh. policy, i believe uh -huh. so they, there is something out there um if you're okay with that language we can it document. has a blank though it says like docusign like well are we going to use docusign Right. And so what is the vendor we're going to use on that so we can populate it in the policy? And then so the approval of the vendor is in tandem with that policy approval as well. If that makes any sense. That doesn't seem like a good idea in case we ever change our vendor. I, th I mean, yeah. it is a model policy, so we can change it to make it work for us. So if we take out that language and say, you know, unapproved, we can just say, the approved vendor or unapproved vendor, and then it's a separate action of the board to approve the vendor, and you can do that and change that anytime you want without having to change it's the policy. Like just a, yeah. Yeah. Been a contract and action item. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because that would, you know, the contract more would general. Be better. Yeah, so if you're comfortable with that, we can update the language a little bit, get it in place, and then of course we'll have to do all of our our homework to get anything going. It's going to be a, an expensive cost, mm -hmm. so I think. Um, so that's going to have to come back for you guys. Okay. Any other questions? No. no. Maybe we put it on the work session for next week. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, where am I at here? Policy and Procedure 112 Director Orientation. Um. I kind of went through and marked up a little bit of this. Uh, there's a lot that can be done online. Um, I don't know if anybody else had an opportunity to kind of dive through some of the check boxes. Um, like board policies and I, do we have an administrative procedures book? We have an employee handbook that was offered to employees once upon a time. Yeah. Uh, we're in the process of updating it. Um, I know all the policies are online. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure district st uh, staff directories. I mean, do we have one of those? I mean, I don't, uh, some of the stuff I don't think is pertinent. Um, yeah, and some of that stuff is exempt information too. Okay. Um, I think when they're talking about board policies, administrative procedures, they're referring to policy and procedure. Okay. And those are online, so we could probably take that off. Uh, board minutes are online for the most part. I think they're updated fairly quickly. Maybe the wording should just be different, though, because I do think referring and showing board policy and procedure and where to find it would be yeah. a good thing, but I don't think you need to get the, hand, the book that's this big. <laughs> no. We don't know if we have enough paper in the district to do that. 
We need that for our kids. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Is Wassel still? No. So that's not even used. You should just um, say no. SIP plans or Yeah. things change too. It's kind of like DocuSign. Yeah. Not to be much there. I think we could scratch the business cards and nameplate, but that's just my opinion. You already have a nameplate. I know. Slated yeah. didn't. Um, and coffee I, cups are really important. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, and I think at the bottom it says review of complaint process, um, which would include, I, I would assume, uh, chain of command and how that works. Any other questions? Comments, concerns, how do we want it? Do we put this on for the work session next week and keep working on it? Yes. Okay. That's what I, I would like to do. It was a lot of information for one person to try to get up to speed on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, we'll, 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 do, yeah. we'll go in there and uh, delete anything that's obsolete. And so We'll at least have a basis to start from to say these things aren't even relevant anymore. Okay. Sounds good. And we'll put it on uh work session uh next meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh last item. Um let's see, is a superintendent search. And I think before we get started, you know, I would I want to clarify to the community that. We don't have a list of candidates. No. Um, we never have. We're still in the process of gathering information. Um, you know, the list that Peggy referenced, I think, was her thoughts and her notes, not the districts, not the boards. So, we're st again, we're still working on the process, and we will try to make we will make this as open and transparent as possible as we go through it. So um, with that, uh, at the last meeting, uh, Peggy and I were tasked to look at hiring firms um, or, or directions to go. Uh, Peggy took on the ESD and um, what's the name of the other place? Um, the Northwest, Northwest uh, Leadership. That's right, Northwest Leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Jeannie and uh, Elisa were going to work on contract language, um, kind of review that. Um, I'm not sure if you're prepared to, if you guys have anything yet, but um, I'll let you guys go first unless you want to. Well, with the caveat that I think the school district attorney should draft the final contract. Yes. I have um, reviewed just sort of some other contracts that are in existence and looked at language, and there was a superintendent contract for Sunnyside in 2017 that I really liked the language that was used as far as having quarterly reviews and meetings between the board and the superintendent referred to the OPSI, um, not the OPSI, the WASDA superintendent um, review form that was studied and is used primarily um, throughout the state. So I think that would be good to look at that, consider that. Um, I'd like to hear Sean Mumford's thoughts on what a superintendent contract should look like. And I think you know, if we choose to do a firm and hire a firm, I think they will also provide good guidance. Mm -hmm. and I know Jeannie looked at some too. Do you have some thoughts to add in? Well, I just, this afternoon, I waded back through all my stuff again, and I, I just jotted down some thoughts. And I think I can express some of these to Jason. Um, I would like to, while we're deciding what to do, to do, a search of our own, we may get some exceptional candidates. Mm -hmm. We have very little to lose and may find a candidate perfect for Prosser and save thousands needed in our classroom. That's my opinion. Um, I think the schools in general have a pretty good uh, grapevine, and I can guarantee you it's all over in many districts that our superintendent, superintendent has taken a new job. So people are aware of this. Um, I, I myself prefer not to hire an interim. Uh, it's costly. I'd like to get the next superintendent on board. 
Um, I don't think employees would be pleased with having two bosses in the period of one year. Um, salary, from what I've looked at, of course, should be based on experience and or schooling. Um, I do want the new superintendent to live in our school district. And to me, it's even better if they have Washington roots. I realize if we go to a national search, that may not happen. But these are the things that are important to me personally and my opinion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, last week, um, when I was giving my thoughts and my information, part of it was pulling information together based on um, on um, having gone through the process before mm -hmm. and going back and looking at old notes from five years ago and um, and beyond, even beyond that on uh, looking at uh, non-traditional searches uh, and then also looking at what was going on in the area also and just kind of brainstorming myself on what was you know what's going on what was going on Thanks, in the area locally Grandview area uh, Sunnyside area what other districts currently were, were looking at as far mm -hmm. as and working on uh, currently as far as their own searches and um, and then that that networking that I've always stayed involved with, um, but um, Prosser has their own unique system and value system, and it's very important that we have as a community are very involved in what that search looks like and what it's going to be important for Prosser. And so it was never an intent that that um, um, we bypass the process at all. It, the mm -hmm. process has got to be followed that we oh, need yeah. to find out what's going to be best for Prosser. And so, um, yeah, I mean, um, the Prosser community, we need to be very actively listening to what's going to be best for Prosser. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I understand where Jeannie's coming from, um, um, but I also understand that um, we have, within the next six months, we're going to have three, well, we have one new board member, congratulations, <laughs> but we're going to have two additional new board members that are going to be coming on board. And so that there's going to be a lot of change happening on the school board and within the the uh, that whole makeup of the the um, uh, that whole school board leadership and the community the community's opinion and so it's I don't know whether that means an interim and then a long term surge or what that's all going to look like um, you know there's there's just a lot of uh, yeah a lot of um, unknowns right now. So, whichever way it goes, I'm just here to I'm just here to offer as much support as I can. Okay. Um, well, a couple things. <clears throat> my, you know, my feeling on on this is, you know, we do a diligent search for the right candidate, right. whether that's um, however that process goes. Um, that that's our main focus is that we find the, the best candidate for Prosser right. School District. Right. Um, you know, of course, I would love to find somebody quickly by July 1st, but in reality, I don't know if that's possible. We it's not. Know, a, we it's don't a, look. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I know uh, Ellensburg, Elisa shared with the, their, 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 they went out um, using, what did they use? I don't even remember what it was. I just, Anyways, I just like their description. Of um, they basically went out on their own mm -hmm. uh, for an interim. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think that's an option that we could do as well. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to, um, you know, maybe who knows what we get. Maybe we find a permanent candidate at that point, um, you know, through that, through that type of search. Mm -hmm. um, 
looking at different hiring firms, I think um, looking through the at the ESD and see what they have to offer. Oh, I forgot the name again, Pacific Northwest. Yeah, Northwest Leadership. Northwest Leadership, sorry. Um, you know, meeting with Northwest Leadership uh, hopefully tomorrow and we can get a draft proposal. I do have um, a couple of proposals from Human Capital Enterprises. Um, they've been very easy and very helpful to work with, uh, both for finding an interim, mm -hmm. if that's our direction, as well as finding a permanent candidate. Mm -hmm. um, each of them have their own unique offerings um, and costs. Um, I don't, we won't do it tonight for the sake of time, but um, you know, maybe at our work session, we can continue this conversation. Right. Um, in addition to potentially having each one of these people actually call in or, or come if they're in the area to, to discuss what they have to offer for Prosper School District. Um, kind of just a quick, quick deal on human capital enterprises. Um, they're actually kind of did a multi, a multi-pronged approach. Um, one is to look for an interim as well as a permanent at the same time. Um, and then they're also pro pro proposing a contract service. So we would contract with them for basically an interim. It would be their employee, not ours, um, which may give us some time as they're looking for a permanent solution. Um, HYA is Hazard Young Atia. Um, you know, they again, they've got a, a broad swath of, of candidates. It'd be national, I think, human capital would be national. Um, but it's uh, really up to the board and how we want to direct that work to be done. So, a lot of information. I think, um, uh, HYA, the Hazard Young and Atia. Uh, there's Christine McDuffie. She's out of, oh man, somewhere on the west side. I can't remember. Edmonds. Edmonds. Um, and then she's also working with, what was the other gentleman's name? Gene Sherritt. Gene Sherritt, mm -hmm. uh, which I believe he's in Wenatchee. Um, so they're fairly close. They could come, they could call in, or if they're in the area, they could come visit with us. So I, I think that's where we're at. Um, any other? No. Questions, comments, concerns? I have two thoughts on what you were discussing. Um, I would just say if, if we get down to you know the two or three or four or five um, companies that we're looking at, I would like the whole board to be able to hear their proposals Correct. and interview them. Yes. And then I think we should also consider putting out a bid for proposals okay. and RFQ and see and see what comes back for, for proposals. At okay. This point, not for the actual job. Okay. Um, yeah. I think we said Northwest is the one that's doing the Grandview search, isn't that? I don't know if we mentioned that, but he's doing the Grandview search right now. And they haven't closed yet, or they hadn't closed yet as of when I talked with him on uh, 14th. Is there yeah. I don't think they're interviewing until they're in I'm sorry, what'd you say? I think I think Grammy is uh, what I heard is they're interviewing towards the end of the month. Yeah. Yeah. We're closing at the end of this week. Yeah. Um, Elisa, is there just put out an RFQ, right, for the uh, hiring firm to submit proposals? That would be my suggestion. Okay. Any other questions? Comments. We're all pretty tired, I imagine. <laughs> um, well, let's continue this uh, in the next meeting, uh, work okay. session. Um, would you guys be in favor of having the few that I've got come in and interview with the board? Sure. You guys good with that? Okay. We'll try to get that, see if we can get that scheduled for the work session. Um, next week okay well we're getting towards the end then. 
Um, we'll go through uh, reports, business manager. All right, so I'm gonna try to keep it simple. This goes to Thursday, it's late. Um, I went to Glasgow last week um, and that was great. So three days, lots of training, updates, great information. Um, always have homework copied out of those meetings. Um, but it was really great. Something I, it's hard once you know what you what you know, it's great to go back, but you'll, there's always tips, tricks, and changes that they cover. Um, so anyways, it was, it was a really good training. Um, we talked about like enrollment changes, the legislative changes, P cards. So I've been holding on the P cards. I hadn't been able to get them up um, in the system. Sean helped me over the weekend, this, this last weekend. So I really appreciate that. And um, so we'll be rolling those out at the district level this um, summer and then to buildings in the fall. So we're really excited about that. But I got some feedback from other districts. So that was great. Um, we are trying to finish up the audit um, by this Friday. So as I mentioned before, the Title I ECS, uh, so the Emergency Connectivity Fund, um, General uh, Financial Accountability, and ASB. So um, we are expecting a management letter. Um, we are not, anyways, so we haven't had any like findings yet and they're still trying to, to finish up the part, you know, whatever, they're trying to finish up the audit, but we are expecting some, um, some changes to come from that. Um, shout out to my team for helping with all that. It is constant. They are throwing stuff our way every single day, multiple times a day. Sean's really helped, um, Deanna's team, my team, everything. So shout out to everybody for helping. Um, anyways, so, we're hoping that will be done soon and we can move on to budget. I do, I have Craig coming in tomorrow to help me get a rolling start on this budget for next year, talking about some historical stuff. He's got two days left on this contract. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm too far behind, I need help. So we're gonna do that. Um, and we're partnering with Grandview. They're gonna come in and help train the uh, fiscal specialist, Tammy. I just haven't had enough time to train her myself. And so they've agreed to help us. So um, we're really excited about that conversation. So that's all I have. Thank you. Deanna? Be quick to, I, I might have heard that it's Jeannie's birthday today. What? Oh, happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. birthday. <laughs> this, is your, this is your present I'll tonight. Never tell. <laughs> it's just a four hour meeting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's just to let you know that um, both of my nurses came in this morning. One is retired and one is resigned. So um, Allison is going to a neighboring district that has a school nurse at every school, which we do not have. And Lynn is going to enjoy retirement. I was sad to hear that, but um, we wish them also will also have to be addressing that need as well. Yeah. And that's it. I talked a number there. <laughs> okay, thank you. Retired. And I'm Matt? Um, I would just say that uh, at our ad team meetings, we're working on fine tuning the strategic plan. Um, is Amy had mentioned budget staffing, levy, um, any cuts associated with that, we'll need to start talking about. Student board reps, we have a couple students that are interested as well as some reps um, that would like to continue on. And then um, we're in the middle of just tying everything down and assessments and um, moving, you know, finishing up evaluations, moving towards graduation, so. Very good, thank you. Um, we'll go board reports. Anthony, we'll start with you. <laughs> yeah. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Not acceptable. Yeah. You gotta talk like 10 minutes. No, no. Uh, Jeannie, go ahead. I only have two quick things. Uh, April 28th was the last PAC meeting. It was a blast, Matt barbecued and uh, it, they, we just had a lot of fun. We did these dance movements. Um, and last night I was at the Mustang business plan competition. Great fun. It's amazing what these kids come up with. But that's all I've been doing. Okay, thank Pass. you. Pass. Pass? Yeah. Uh, Lisa? Sure. I attended the Cinco de Mayo Festival put on by Frosted Friends of the Library. It was moved into the old gym on the fly because of the rain. So the school <laughs> district really accommodated. It was very well attended. There were over 100 um, students there. We had a great representation for the migrant department by Selena Hazard. Um, she gave me a new roller. It's not this one. Um, with the migrant department information on it. With lots of our bilingual Frosted staff there in attendance assisting and participating. That was wonderful. Um, I do want to comment on uh, Ms. Duarte spoke um, regarding the bilingual option on Zoom, and I don't know if that's an addition to the subscription we have. 
but it was very easy for, for me to use. And I'm not tech savvy. Everything in that meeting was in Spanish and it was just closed caption translated in English instantaneously. And that might be a cost-effective option for us. So families can participate, watch later or watch it at the time. Oh, cool. And so it would be translated in the English cl in closed caption. It was so easy. I mean, they just, they like, oh, rattled so my hand. would it do the other me. way around for? Yeah, I think, okay. yeah. I, 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 well, I don't know that oh, personally. Okay. No, that's a. I, I would think if you could do, do it one way, you could do it the other way. Um, another, I'm just talking all kinds of tech tonight. Um, we have, uh, there's a local nonprofit that um, suggested that we try their OWL camera. And I talked about it with Blake. And it is a camera, like we would put it in the middle here and it senses who's speaking. And so it has 365 turning oh. on it. Oh, wow. So like it would turn to people in the audience or to the speaker. So we wouldn't have this like 7-Eleven surveillance camera <laughs> often. <laughs> and it, it becomes, it, it, it kind of, I guess it learns and, and gets better. And you go, it is a, a big dip. It's a, approximately a $1,200 cost. But if it's something we, that would improve, I think, communication, improve the meetings again, eliminate the 7-Eleven style of it and use throughout the district, it might be worth it. And they have offered to let us try it. Um, that was something we'd be interested oh. in. And then my last comment is that we have 51 days left of Mr. Ellis. And, I, you know, important, you know, how, what's, yeah. what's your exit strategy? We haven't discussed that. Yeah. Um, so tying up loose ends, of course, the evaluation, the audit. Um, I think trying to put things down on paper for the new superintendent. Uh, if there's anything as far as litigation that's hanging out there um, to try and get as far as we can on that. Um, but yeah, like I said, being open to meet with whoever is selected, um, trying to put things on paper and trying to transition not only the new leader, but also the organization. What that looks like is handing off things gradually to Deanne and Amy, um, finding people within the system that can take it for a time being, and then defining that kind of, you know, what still is hanging out there for the superintendent. Um, like I said, part of that is negotiation. Part of that's, you know, of course we have summer school, we have summer programs. Mm -hmm. And so having a point person for that, making sure that there's somebody, summer tends to be a time when principals and central office uh, take some time, but making sure that there's somebody, you know, always in the office um, as we transition. Do you plan to work through June 30th? Um, that's when I'm contracted through. And so, yeah, it's, it's as long as the board would like me to work um, and I'll continue to be here uh, to serve. Um, so I want to help Prosser in any way that I can. I forgot one thing. Tomorrow at six o'clock at Riverview, thanks to Jesse Wilson, who texted me, is our first early learning night. We're having that tomorrow at six. The first what? Early learning okay, night. Okay. For kids with, families with kids from zero to five, not yet mm -hmm. in kindergarten. Six at KRV. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to make it quick. The one thing I I, I heard late uh, this afternoon was, um, Inslee signed a bill from uh, Senator Mark Schessler, and basically this this bill. Maybe an opportunity for us. I forwarded it to Amy and um, and Elisa, but basically, with this bill, it's bill Senate Bill fifty four hundred three. It basically allows a school district to create a depreciation um, sub fund um, up to two percent of the general fund each fiscal year for building maintenance. So I think you know. Granted, this is just a highlight, but as we look more into this. I think it's a, I think it's a great opportunity for us to, uh, it gives us more um, opportunities to take care of our facilities. So um, that's all I have. Uh, future meetings is a study session uh, next Wednesday, May 17th, right here in the library workroom at 7 p.m. In addition to that, we will have a security meeting at six o'clock. Um, and I I'm on that 
and with me being president as well as the legislative rep, I would ask that somebody else um, come take part and be the, um, I don't even, can't even think of the word right now. Um, Interim. <laughs> no, it would be, the, you know, kind of run the meeting, set the agendas and stuff like that. So is there any takers? I'd be happy to do it, but just not next week. Oh, for goodness! Well, the person that <laughs> is that the person that's nice taking people. Andy's place. Andy's place. Yes, but it also would be. I, I've been chairing that that board. Um, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> Jason, I'll help you whack in. Um, and I'm at I've town. never sat in on one of them, but I would still try to help all of them. Okay, I just need somebody to take over as chair of that. So, um, is this the work session? Yeah, this oh, this is the this yeah. is the safety security, and security meeting. meeting. Yeah, depending on what direction the board wants to go. Last year we met up until maybe May or June, and then we just said we'll resume them at the start of the school year. Oh, Correct. Okay. And so everybody, so this may be one of the last ones that we should. Yeah. Okay, and you won't be there this Wednesday. No, I will. Oh, okay. Um, but we do need somebody else. Yeah. I'll come and support you. <laughs> I can follow up with you. Okay. Not at ten o'clock. Perfect. Yeah. And then my, my brain slowly like shutting down. Um, all right, with that, um, we're going to recess our regular meeting and go into executive session uh, pursuant to RCW 4230.1101G. Um, oh, action may follow. Uh, and this is to evaluate the quality. Evaluate the qualification of an applicant for public employment or to review the performance of a public employee, however, subject to RCW 4230-144, discussion by a governing body of salaries, wages, and other conditions of employment to be generally applied within the agency shall occur in a meeting open to the public. And when a governing body elects to take final action of Final action, hiring, setting the salary of an individual employee or class of employees or discharging or disciplining an employee, the action shall be taken in a meeting open to the public. Um, How long? 10 minutes? 15? Yeah, 15. 15 minutes. So we will adjourn at 10.06 and we will resume at 10.21. 21. Sorry.